Yes, it's time for my wolf to become a god. <laughs> so do we have to like pack all our knickknacks or are we like being kicked out? <laughs> Sad face. <laughs> Aqua's gonna do that for all of his little statues. Uh, I will. I will utilize those storage services. <laughs> okay. Jules will actually clear out his storage unit. Luckily, Imnos kind of doesn't own squat. <laughs> Um, well, I guess we'll probably want to head quick into town to get whatever trail rations and whatnot we need. And then yeah. we should probably start heading, uh, heading out toward, are we going to do, uh, uh Gala first or Randy's Rats first? I think Randy's, Randy's Rats, rats are on the way. way. I yep. wasn't sure if we wanted to do Gala first because that was more time, time, conscious and then do randy's rats on the way back but we can do randy's rats on the way there it doesn't really matter uh but yeah get our trail rations and all the you know equipment we will need yeah because the way i figured was we're probably going to wind up spending the night in fort stead anyway so might yeah. as well do randy's rats while we're there i mean that makes sense I'm I, I would much rather spend more time not in the city of gold <laughs> cities make me a little Human cities make me a little uh, claustrophobic. I mean, aren't you in a city right now? Like, haven't you been spending years in the city since Nilar City is technically a city? She doesn't have to be happy about it. Roves. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I would like to swing by a the nearest temple of uh, uh, I'm struggling to remember the name of the not bad guy deities. Yes, them. That one. I want to go to that one. I'll be right Perfect. back really quick. Uh, 
I'll uh, stop and uh, wait patiently to be acknowledged. Well, not a problem. I haven't right been here uh, very long. I was hoping I will. I've been led to believe that uh, I can uh, pick up items of healing here. I per splendid. Thank you. Uh, belt of healing. Uh, low. Let's pretend I'm using Eldritch, Eldritch Blast here. Uh, I will quick uh, detect magic on it. For all intents and purposes, I can tell this is the correct item. Gotcha. And I have no reason to believe he would be dishonest. Right. Uh, that's about how much I had budgeted for it. So uh, that that's excellent. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I will count out 75 platinum pieces. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate it. That's the plan. Uh, he'll sketch a, a polite bow and exit. All right. Um, I have one other thing I want to do, but that can wait. Yes. I'd actually like to ask the folks in the party in general for a piece of advice for this gala I presume I should dress a bit more formally probably a good idea should I seek out a tailor here or wait until we get to the city of gold um do wait we'll, no we'll look him up and down can I I'm sorry for interrupting you John I was going to just do knowledge local to see if there's a, if there are good tailors in Nilar or if we should wait. <laughs> Apparently, Kip looks down at his clothes, looks at Akko. His clothes looks at Akko. His clothes looks at Akko. I mean, I I have fantastic clothes. So. Jules is evaluating uh, whether or not uh, any member of the party will need new clothes for such an event. Are you asking us or are you just looking at us? I'm just looking at you. Hey, Joel, if I stand next to Imnos, uh, 
just to gauge <coughs> relative height, how tall does Imnos appear to be? Imnos is about 5'10". 5'10"? Oh. You're just a wee man, aren't you? Damn, those are good rolls. <laughs> those noses suck. Yeah, so if you're if you're wanting to, to to blend in more, we probably should wait to pick up clothes there. That makes sense. I would rather not insult our hosts. Although, uh, to be fair, uh, I would think it would be the responsibility of the host to make sure that we're properly garbed for something like this. Our host yeah. is also hiring adventurers. They should know going in that they're they can't make any um assumptions about our attire i it 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 may be very well that they want us to to stand out as what we are i was i was going to say in my experience with these sort of um soirees uh adventuring parties are normally expected to keep to the outskirts um of the of the event um but I will be happy to uh, walk amongst the uh, echelon of folks to kind of maintain an interior view for all of us, if you would like. Yeah, I already have those, uh, so I can be on the on the floor group as opposed to the on the wall guarding group. They most likely won't want me on the floor anyways, and I am not wasting my money to buy special clothes to protect a bunch of nobles. It's their loss. Akko is already dressed like a noble anyway, so <laughs> this this is my adventuring state. So, uh, something occurred to me. Uh, it, it, it may be, will be able to wait, uh, but uh, it, we could also take care of it before we left. Uh, so, we're we're done in the dormitories now. Uh, there are quite a few properties in Nilar. If we wanted to uh, rent or lease something to use as a, a guild hall or a base of operations, uh, at the very least, to store our things while we're gone. I think maybe that's worth considering a little. Not Later. a lot further down the line, but in a little bit. Indeed. Because I don't have much to store are, myself. Our, I don't either, but our funds Fair. are already a little pre-spoken for, for various needs. Oh, I'm absolutely skint, so... Let's get a little bit more uh, commission under our belts then before we consider finding a place to settle in. I'm just not particularly used to being uh, homeless, so this is a new and uncomfortable feeling for me. You get used to it after about a year. I mean, that is just part of adventuring, right? Right? Yeah, adventuring. Don't worry, Kip. I'm sure we'll be able to take care of one another. Well, I understand that. I just don't see the point of adventuring if you don't have a home to return to. Well, I mean, what if we, what if we conquer someplace along the way and that could be our home? Worst comes to worst, um, Kip, my family has already told you that my home is your home. I rewind. Can we talk about conquering Akko? Do you do, I, is that the word choice we want to use? I think that that uh, her parents' home <laughs> is your home comes with some uh, some lingering obligations, though. Uh, Kip, are we no, just it gonna, doesn't. Are we are we are we just going to 
go past the concept of Akko wanting us to conquer some nation? I mean, no, no, no. That's, that's not quite what I said, but I, I mean, I, I love that you're thinking big. I think that he said bonkering. No, no, I, I meant like, you know, we, we cleared out that bandit camp. We could have set up a fortress there. But oh, we didn't. okay, okay. I just want to... I, I just want to understand, because I'm not down for conquering nations. Yeah, no, no, I, I'm yeah. not saying we find a hamlet and we become their warlords or anything. And of course, a commandeering situation as opposed to a conquering situation. Can we can we just agree not to set up a, a base of operations in a forest with a cat with a head that's 32 meters across, according to Akko? <clears throat> I, I mean, may have exaggerated slightly, but yes. I can agree to that. That would be fantastic to see. Actually, what if it's friendly? No. Yeah. What if it wants? What if all it wants are the big pets? You That's all, Luna's nightmare. <laughs> you, you, As, <laughs> you all yelled at me for ps, 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 ing. So, I I specifically asked what the opposite of a ps, ps, ps was. I believe that's where you put a bunch of coins in a jar and you shake them at it. That uh, my druidic knowledge tells me that that's accurate. Yes. That just attracts Akos. I think that might that's, be racist. That's quite true. Wait, hold on, let me try. I put a, I put, um, a, a couple copper piece, a few copper pieces in a glass jar and jingle them near Akko. <laughs> so, uh, I hand him the jar here. Take two copper pieces. For those Gladly. that are, for those that are more worldly than myself, um, how long of a ride will this be? I think we have a total of four horses now because we kept the ones from the bandit camp. No, we didn't. We I... did not keep the one with the wagon. We kept the other mounts. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so... We could probably pick up another couple horses if we want. Or a wagon. That was... That was going to be my suggestion. Is if it's going back. to, if it's going to be a particularly long ride, and given the amount of, uh, shall we say, treasure we usually come across, maybe a wagon and riders could switch off to spare the bottoms. I that like seems, this idea. If more treasure. That seems reasonable. Good. And we're going along the road, so it shouldn't be too difficult. I'm willing to spring for the covered wagon. That'll that'll be a little nicer on us. Yeah, I mean it's not really going to ding the party gold that much. Hey. Oh yeah, does the party have its own? The party gold has its own share, doesn't it? Yep. Do we want to take it out of that? That should be what it's for. Yeah. And that's that's yeah. the purpose we, of it. So yeah. Can't, Perfect. We can't get a stagecoach. And honestly, it's not like if we decide we don't need it anymore that most villages won't have a buyer for that type of thing. That's fair. Nope. I'm I'm fine with a covered wagon personally. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go grab some dry goods and So are we are we using two sorry. Alrighty. Awesome. While we're doing that, wait, I'm actually going to splurge a little bit on the party out of my own pocket with uh, some fresh fruit. Nice. Like maybe a bag of apples or something like that. Was the plan to hook up the two extra horses to the cart? I think so. Aye, that way we can rotate off uh, riders. Okay. 
I was making sure we didn't need to buy horses, too. Hey, Kip. Hey. Can you, while you're in town, can you buy me food? I need to go pray. Yeah. All right. Uh, wait, before we leave, I'm just going to go to the Grove at the Academy and do my prayers and say goodbye to the trees. Using all my good rolls, Wade. Do I recognize the voice? Okay. Um, let's see here. Anything else you're looking to do? I I actually do have a question for you, Wade. Shit. Like um faith faith wise with the other druids in mm -hmm. the um in the academy, am I do they treat me like an apostate? Since they know I don't follow like an actual paragon, like I have a weird religion, or are there other people of my faith at the academy? There's one other person at the academy that follows your particular brand of uh, natural faith. Um, okay. You're not treated like an apostate by any means. Uh, there's a variety of religions that come to the adventuring academy. It's a very big melting pot of societies and cultures. And because of that, no one's really treated like an outcast because of the way that they they practice or what they preach. Unless it's something really sinister, like you know, the halflings always get shit. Um, right. But you're. I not kind of assume it's we're also like the diplomats of the druids, so treat, treating us like apostates is not exactly the best. Yeah, it doesn't really benefit them at all to treat you like shit. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else anyone's looking to do in the city before you take off? I'm just picking up a couple extra uh, pieces of equipment, uh, like replacing the mirror I lost to the Fae and getting more trail rations. Easy enough to do. Um, all right. So with the acquiring of your cart, you all will be able to cut off a day's travel in both uh, locations. So two days to get to Fort Stead, three days to get to the city of gold. Um, I also sent you a quick message, Wade. Take a look here. Gotcha. All right. Awesome. So you all hit the road. Um, again, it's a very nice, clear day out. Uh, you all are taking off still early in the morning. Um, let's take a look here. Day's going to pass relatively mundanely. Uh, you see a couple people who pass you. You pass a few little farms here and there along the road. Uh, you do pass a few guard patrols uh, throughout the day also. Uh, this is part of the King's Highway. So there is a lot of foot traffic, a lot of people moving around, a lot of security, as it were, to keep this particular road working and functioning properly. Um, you do note as you all are traveling that there are several places where there are basically rest stops for people to stop at convenient locations where camps are sort of pre-set up. You know, there's fire pits already put in. The land has been sort of cleared of brush and tamped down um, so that if people need to stop for the night, there's an easy place to do it. So you know that there's no lacking of locations for you to stop, but they are all out very much in the open. Um you do pass, you know, trees and stuff here, but for the most part, you're passing toward, you're going through a very 
open plained area currently heading towards sure. Northstead. Uh, but soon enough, night comes upon you all, or at least dusk. Um, where are you all looking to set up camp for the evening? What are your thoughts, V? Um, honestly, as much as I hate crowds, I believe that there's safety in numbers when on the open road. So if we can find one of these campgrounds that already has some people stopped by it, then I'd prefer that. Otherwise, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll take anything where we can see a threat coming. Very good. All right. So you all pat push on for a little bit more into dusk. Um, and you do see a campfire lit up ahead of you. Uh, you do see a large carriage wagon um, pull to the side of the road. Horses are tied up to the side of the wagon. Um, looks like kind of a, an Argo type thing where someone seems to be living out of this particular wagon based on things hanging off the side, the build, the size of the carriage. Um, and you see a couple people near the fire as you all approach. Are you just walking straight up on them? Or are you doing anything to <laughs> investigate it? What's your approach like? I'm going to rein in shy and just call out, Hello, the fire! Uh, you see one of the, the figures uh, stand up. Um, just based on the fire behind him, you can tell that he's a more squat individual um, as he turns around. Who's on the road? Just some travelers seeking a place to lay our heads. May we approach the camp? Come into the light. Step forward. Mm -hmm. You Jules guys get... will um, will cast light on his um, glove. Okay. So uh, light springs up from jewels, illuminating the entire party. Um, at the same time as you guys approach, you get a full view of the band who's in front of you. Um, he's a Dwarven man. Um, he is wearing plates of armor along his shoulders and down his arms, but it appears that he's removed his chest plate um, and other pieces of armor has been setting it off to the side of the fire, getting ready for, you know, to put himself down for the evening. Um, he has a hand on, um, on the, the handle of an ax that's turned upside down with the head down on the ground as he leans on it. What's your business on the road? I'll we, take... Go ahead. We're simply heading towards Nilar... Not Nilar City. From Nilar City to uh, Fort Stead. We were wondering if we may share your fire. Come gather up. I'm putting on some stew. Um, I might have a bigger pot. More than welcome to share the rest with me. That's Thank very you. kind of you. Thank you. Well, you don't get very far trust, mistrusting everyone on the road. <laughs> no, you do not. You My name is you. Alara. Uh, pleasure to meet you, Alara. Uh, that same, sounds familiar. Uh, my name is Stannis Runesmith. It's a pleasure to meet you. The pleasure is all mine. Do you need help doffing your armor? It's been a while since I had a squire with me, uh, but I wouldn't say no to someone unbuckling this back piece for me, if you don't mind. Jules will help him, and also, while I'm doing it, make sure he's not injured. Um, as you move up, Jules, and uh, begin unbuckling the back, uh, the first thing that you notice is the weight of this of this piece. Um, it's not just the gorget and the, the chosses down to his arm guards. Um, this shouldn't weigh as much as it's weighing in your hands. It is bulky. Um, it, the plates are probably twice as thick as Alara's armor that you've seen her wearing. Um, and as you're pulling it off of them, you do catch the glimpse on the undersides of the plates, these little intricate runes covering every square centimeter of the underside of the armor. Um, as you pull it off of him, he turns and just holds out one hand to you and he takes it from you. 
Um, and then mm-hmm. just lightly puts it on the ground with the rest of his armor. Uh, Jules is not exceptionally strong, so he will be putting his entire uh, body into helping him move this stuff. But I'll help Jules. <laughs> as, soon, as soon as it's handed off to him, he doesn't even you, you, like normally like if you someone picks up something heavy, there's like a moment where their arm goes down, they recalibrate their weight. He just takes it and his arm doesn't move as all the weight is put into it. And then he just sets it down on the ground very lightly. That is um that is some exceptionally heavy armor. <sighs> Adamantine's not the lightest thing in the world, lad. Um, but I appreciate your assistance with that buckle. It's starting to give me a little bit of trouble in my old age. <laughs> Can't quite Mnose is going to reach back quite as far. Mnose is going to set to about uh, tending to his fire and making sure there's enough spare wood for it. Where do uh, you hail from? Uh, well, I, I'm originally from the Under Senate, um, but I uh, I traveled out to those lands many years ago for the Runesmiths. Fascinating. He uh, walks over to his cart. Um, and lifts up a, a hatch and pulls out a very large pot, much larger than the one he currently has, and, and brings it over the fire and starts switching it out. I'm going to use Detect Magic, Quid. Um, make a caster level check for me, please. Okay. So it's it's a die 20 plus your Warlock levels. I will take a 10, so 14. Okay. Um, the blaze that the wagon gives off almost blinds you uh, before you manage to shift your head away from it like you were looking for a brief moment into the sun and the sky it feels like it lights up the entire area uh, before you get used to the intensity of the magic coming off of the wagon Um, Um, you also catch some magic coming off the armor and his axe Uh, Kip can't help but yelping slightly as he averts his eyes. He he looks over and kind of like raises an eyebrow. Um, you all right, Kip? Everything all right? Hey, I, 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 I'll be completely honest. I do the same thing I do every night when we make camp and make sure there's no magical itsy bitsies about. And uh, <laughs> our friend damn near blinded me. Uh, well... Uh, Tech the magic in the area of a runesmith isn't the smartest thing to do, lad. I, I can't <laughs> say I'm familiar, but I can confirm you're one of those now, can't I? Oh, well, well, that is a valuable lesson. Come over and sit by the fire. I'll tell you all about it. I would love to hear. He uh, I'd love starts to learn more about this. Starts pulling out some <laughs> rabbits that he has from the hatch and starts chopping them up and putting them into the pot with some water. Um, None of you have ever heard of the Runesmiths. Um, have, has Jules ever heard, Jules ever heard of them? Uh, knowledge local. I'm going to roll the same, if you don't mind. Yeah, if you have knowledge local, feel free to roll it. Big rolls. Apparently. All right, I got 19, 24, <laughs> 24. Um... <laughs> And no, you're not quite shit. sure. Yeah, you haven't really heard much. Uh, Kip, all right. Um, so the basic things that you all know, and you all know this collectively, is that the Runesmiths are a special order of of magic crafters that specifically leave the lands of the Under Senate voluntarily, because you all know that once someone leaves the Under Senate, they can never come back. Um, Exile is a big punishment, but for those who voluntarily leave, it's sometimes seen as a great honor. Um, And so the runesmiths go out to do trade with the world on behalf of the Undersena. Um, They're usually acknowledged as exceptionally capable magical craftsmen uh, because of what they do and, and how far they travel and they pick up things. And more or less martyrs to their culture, aren't they? Not quite like that. Um, The... You would you would know that the ones who man the the walls of the Under Senate are the ones seen as the true martyrs of the Under Senate, 
because they don't go out and, and gain glory and gain gold and knowledge and information and bring it back. Their entire life is literally spent on the wall just outside of their kingdom that they can never go back into so that they can protect it from being sieged. Um, but there's a, a place of honor amongst the runesmiths for what they do. Um, they bring knowledge back to the undersenate of the outside world. And that's effectively what he starts talking about. Um, Eight. We left the... Uh, well, me and my brother, we left the uh, the undersenate 50, 60 years ago. Traveled out here into the, the world of the Imperium. Uh, selling our wells, crafting many different objects, uh, learning the magics of the hold and the Accords. Uh, interesting magics. Um, and trading the, the knowledges of how to enchant. Uh, the runesmiths exist to keep our lands from stagnating like a dull pond surrounded by rock and not letting those waters temper. Constantly feeding a flood of knowledge and coin and power back into our lands that they can't acquire the same ways like the Imperium or the other lands can. So it looks utterly enraptured by this guy talking like he you you guys have never seen him paying more attention. <laughs> so I sell a variety of things across the lands and uh, what I acquire I bring back to the first watch and uh that's essentially the runesmiths for you. Could I beg a, a wee piece of advice off you? In what regard? Well, as someone who's been more or less traveling the lands uh, for 60 years plus, uh, what is one piece of, of magical attire or equipment that you think uh, might be overlooked by budding adventurers that uh, you would consider absolutely necessary? a good question well i wish it was only 60 years i've been walking around the lands um i'm, I'm a fair bit older than that but uh, so. you don't look a day over a hundred <laughs> uh. <laughs> i like you um fair bit of you know they say that probably one of the things that people always overlook when they travel is taking care of themselves. Uh, when you, you go off into some of the, the dangerous places that adventurers go off to, uh, Necropoli, and these delving dungeons that crazy wizards have created and shit, um, <laughs> they have a lack of provisions, they have a lack of self-care, um, and time works against them. Um, I don't know if you know this, but we spend a third of our life asleep. Oh. So there's a an object. Uh, I think I have one in the cot. Um, it's a it's a ring that's uh, been enchanted to provide you with nourishment and to provide your body with energy to relieve you of exhaustion from a little about to sleep to give you the same invigoration. That sounds incredible. Uh, it does. It's a powerful little enchantment. Not quite as complicated as some people think it is to make it. Um, but I think that's probably one of the more overlooked things, personally. I see. I was going to to guess you might say a haversack, but uh, I would absolutely go ahead. Sorry. Well, it's no, 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 no. You go first. I would absolutely understand why that would be overlooked and why that would be so valuable. Um, it's uh, I, I don't think people think about it enough. Uh, they don't think about the dangerous situations they put themselves into and how quickly um, things can run out. You know, you can only carry so many rations on you before they spoil, even though they've been salted and cured. Um, and if you're in a bad, a bad fireball, it can burn away all your things like that. Stares at Akko. Well, I think many young adventurers also... and. I'm, I'm speaking as a young adventurer, of course, um, find themselves blinded by seeking as much power as they can obtain as fast as they can obtain it. So when you're thinking 
of equipment, you think, what can make me stronger? What can make me tougher? What can make me more... more of an at more of a challenge to to whatever we would face and yeah. that i don't think is something that people think about as well you still have your day-to-day -day needs that everyone has it's the external power right they they want to have yeah. that force about them i can cleave off a dragon's head and i can take the <laughs> blow from a giant to my chest right that's that's what they want to do um, yes it's it's the simple things that will tear you down bit by bit by bit i think it's a very good point. It's Magic like swords and stabs of flame here are all well and good, but hunger and fatigue are relentless foes. Like I don't think anybody here wants to cleave off any dragon's heads. Oh, which reminds me. I'm probably not going <laughs> to. I'm going to go grab some like potatoes and carrots and onions from the cart to add to his stew. Yeah. I'll set about there. peeling those. I'll uh, actually offer him uh, some of the apples. If you've been eating uh, trail rations for a while, maybe some fresh fruit might uh, pique your interest. Oh, I mean, I keep a, a pretty good stock personally. I travel through a lot of cities. Um, oh, I... But I appreciate it. It will go good for the, the dinner tonight. And a community pot is better than the solo pot. Kip will pass the bag around. Uh, so I hope you don't find me uh, impolite if I ask, uh, do, you, do you take apprentices for your trade? Obviously, not for a non-dwarven lad to become a runesmith, but uh, it, enchanting is something I'm actually quite interested in and something I will be capable of doing uh, not too far in the future. Well, uh, we, we do take apprentices, uh, but they have to be from the under senate. Um, uh, not necessarily a dwarf. I mean, there's all sorts in the under senate. Um, I had a, a young apprentice about 50 years back uh, after I learned the trade myself. Uh, fine drow boy. Um, he's quite good at what he did. And I think I had... My brother had a, uh, a goblin girl. Um... Ah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Nee. That was her name, Nee. Very good. Uh, great at illusion enchantments. Um, but I'm, I'm afraid that unless you're from, from my home, uh, the runesmiths, they don't take outsiders into the collective. Because of, because of our duty back to our home, it doesn't make much sense to have people who don't have that tie back. I do it for the my family selling your trade secrets. There. To train the competition, so to speak. Well, not so much the competition. It's it's more of the the fact that my family is in the under senate. My my wife, my children, they live there, and everything that I acquire goes back there to take care of them. Uh, Aye, and not just them, but sense. my but my burrow too. Um, and so uh, you wouldn't have that tie back. Your money would flow back, I assume, to the Imperium, um, and it, it's. Uh, I guess you might say it's not an economical decision, but it's more of a, a tradition. That makes perfect sense to me. It does. So I hear your fancy hole can teach you all sorts of stuff. Uh, it's so okay. I'm told. It's okay enchantments. They're okay enchantments. My, that's all I'll say. <laughs> might, might I ask a, an interesting question? Sure. What is What are the oldest runes that you you know and use? Mm. He like sits back. Oldest. Well, I believe the the first runes would have been old gnomish. Um, then I believe the giants. And then the elves. Um, I believe the elves with their... That was so long ago that... Uh, I mean, the runes were made before the written words that catalog histories. Um, I guess I guess the oldest runes that someone like yourself would use. Oh, well... I'm a student of history, if anything. I use a variety of uh, giant runes um, and under runes. Um, from the people of the Underdark. Hmm. 
I find that the enchantments that they weave are potent. Um, and if you know how to work around the pesky sun, you can make them last in the light. Um, not easy, but it can be done. I've studied a, uh, a fair amount of, of elven runes, uh, not in the same sense of runesmithing, but uh, in, in an academic sense. I'd be curious to see what, uh, what you work with. Uh, sure. Um, elven runes. Uh, he stands up and he makes his way over to his cart and he climbs up inside of it. Um, mm -hmm. You hear a little bit of banging for a moment before he comes back out. Um holding um, a pair of boots. Um, and he, he walks over and he, he plops it down in front of you. Um, very fine, supple leather um, wrapped in what looks like silk around the calves and then down <laughs> along the bottom of the boot. Um, you can see that the silk has stitched runes in it, uh, flowing, uh, very unlike the runes that you saw inside of his armor. They were very blocky, and sharp lined in his armor but here they seem almost like cursive writing um very elegant uh swooping cross stitching uh to create these very intricate runes that go across the silk weave uh, that would be elven right there um very hard um mostly because of the sweep uh a lot of runes are precise um, and he flips his armor over to show the blocky runes on his armor. Um, this is all about angles here. Uh, the geometry of the rune is very important to the arithmetic of how the runes work with one another in conjunction to create enchantments and cross enchantments. But with elven runes, they flow with one another. And so they're delicate, very delicate. That makes sense if you think about it from a natural perspective. There's very little in nature outside of minerals and rocks that occurs in hard angles. It's true. Uh, I could say it better myself. Um, and with the elven people being as closely tied to nature as they are since the age of dreams, it seems almost very appropriate for them. I have to Jules, say, both are certainly quite magnificent looking in their own way. They have their own unique beauty. What are those magnificent boots, though? Uh, oh, no. Uh, those particular boots, uh, they I believe the, it may be a bit, uh, a bit pointed, but I believe they're just called simply boots of elven kind. Um, I'm always trying to find new nifty names to call things, um, especially because these particular boots are very good at making one be quieter when they're walking around. Very good scout boots. Um, good for a, a forest ranger who's trying to not be be so obvious when they're walking around, trying to avoid things. If you want a good name for them, might I suggest cat's paw boots? Cat's paw boots. I like that. Or boots of the pointy interloper. Hey, hey, <laughs> we're not all interlopers and thieves. Thank you very much. I'm a diplomat. Jules, Jules is going to close his <laughs> eyes uh, and try to think back to um, the, that that favorite book of his uh, and try to, to glimmer if any of these runes match up with what he can remember. Give me an intelligence check. Well. You sit there for a moment, um, thinking about the runes that you've seen in the past um, from a variety of different books and experiences. Um, these runes that you're looking at feel new. And the runes that you've experienced felt very old. Okay. Uh, you felt a weight from them that you don't quite feel from the magic in these particular rooms. Okay. I'll hand the, the boots back to him. He takes You're, them. Uh, beautifully crafted. You did very good on the scripting. Oh, thank you. But it's not my work. It's my brother's. Um, we, we did a trade a, a few months back when we caught up with one another. I thought I would have something fancy to carry around with me. People love the swoops. 
Um, and, you know, as much as I don't like to, to talk about it, uh, people who like to sneak around have a lot of money to spend, and I need a, I need a calling item. <laughs> Can only sell so many draw the grave axes. <laughs> so you've traveled around a lot. I have I've traveled these lands for, for quite a while. How, how far north have you been? I've been to the Accords. Um, I've never been to the, to the Citadel, um, but uh, I've been up near the... Uh, what is it called? Um, the Black Mountains, I believe is what they call it, the, the High Pass. Mm-hmm. I've been there. So you've seen the Great Fall? I didn't get quite close to it, but I could hear the rumble. Uh, it reverberates through the mountains like an echo for hundreds of miles. What would, out of curiosity, what would you say is the best way to get there? Um, he reaches into his pack and pulls out a map. Let's see, best way to get there. Well, I mean, you could take a boat. I think that if you're trying to get to the falls, the best way I would do it would be through a boat. Um, you know, get up towards uh, Wings Keep um, and take a boat straight up. Not lots of people like to go north into the lake. Um, uh, various I mean, reasons. Of course. The towers scare many people. <laughs> Um, yes. I've never seen them myself. I've always wanted to, but I've never had a chance to see the towers. Um, but I would take a boat. I definitely wouldn't want to go through the Accords um, because you'd have to cut through the forest shadows. And I've done that trip once in 60 years and I never want to do it again. Because it was perilous? Yes, that's probably the best way to say it. The only way you can travel through that particular forest is with a, a contingent guard um, of the the Reavers, and uh, they are fearsome guards for the Accords um, mm -hmm. in a fearsome land. They're terrifying. <laughs> fearsome is putting it nicely. <laughs> I'm from there, and I lived in the Citadel. They are fucking terrifying. I would not say that they were good as good campmates as you all are proving to be this evening. Um, but the journey was worth it, at least the one time. Um, seeing the Black Mountains was uh, something of a bucket list item, I suppose you could say. And the ore I picked up there was fabulous. It's good to know. Excellent, thank you. What's your interest in the falls? Well, How many people think about them? Or are Some you nights... young adventurers after the towers? No, actually, it's after the falls. Water from the falls, to be specific. Um, we had a predicament with a fae and a man and essentially a custody battle over a young girl. Ooh. Girl at that. Um, and one of the ways to solve this problem will be, would be to bring that woman, um, some water from the falls. Well, I, I can't claim to know too much about the fair folk and their practices other than rumors that I've heard along my travels. Um, dangerous bargains to be made there. Um. Watchers from the fall could be powerful. Um, it's it's the life of, of the entire continent flows from the falls. Um, through Lake Garen and down into the very many rivers that flow through our lands. Um, I, I can't it's imagine what It's the purest water there is. I, I would assume so. <laughs> um, I, I would assume so. Um, I'm not it sure is. what uh, advice I could give you there. I was just wondering what the best way to get there was. 
you suggesting boat is still very good advice, and I appreciate that. If you can find a captain brave enough, I'm sure that the boat would be the easiest means. I feel like mm. better advice would be suggesting a weapon to kill the Fae with, but that's just me. Cold iron? See, that, that's, what, that's what we really needed. He reaches down into his bag, and he pulls out a spear. Um, mm. I have one here fashioned from cold iron. Uh, simple enchantments, nothing too fancy. Um, but against the fair folk, it's the, the most brilliant weapon you could have. Something crafted from cold iron. Keep in mind, killing that nymph could have bad, uh, bad output on that forest, though. Well, let's not forget that uh, the Dwarven girl is trapped in the Fey realm. Killing the Fey might leave her there permanently. Well, in this particular case, we've also agreed in good faith to assist her. But... Hey, breaking a deal with the Fey never really turns out well, according to the stories. This does not mean we will always treat favorably with all Fey. If you've, you fashioned yourself a gaze, uh, I wouldn't go against it. Could have terrible Aye. consequences on you. Not just her. I'd rather not be known as an oathbreaker to any particular race at this point in my adventuring career. Great. I think that's a wise plan. We don't expect to make it up to the next fall within, you know, the next few weeks, but learning more about it is... The next few it is, months. <laughs> it is among our important uh, tasks. It is one of those things I tried to keep in my in my thoughts, be it in the back or the forefront. So where thank is, you for sharing what wisdom you have about it. Where are your feet taking you now? Fortstead. Nice little place. Quaint. Have, yes. have you been there recently? I, I'm coming from there. Do you uh, know anything about uh, Randy's Tavern? I think there's a lodge. Um, Randy's Lodge. Yeah, that's the one. He's a little one on the outskirts of the town. Um, I've never been there. Okay. Usually when I go into a town, um, I'm, I'm usually recognized. Um, I have to go through all the hassle with the hold in each new town. Uh, but the local lords always want me to, to come around their estates and such. Oh, we just heard it was a good place to mouse around while you're there. Could be. Sim I just look at Akko. I just look at Akko with this look on my face like, did you actually just do that? Are you serious right now? Akko completely ignores her as he continues to do what he's been doing the whole time, which I just didn't want to interrupt the conversation. I wanted to sit down originally, pull out that book, Wade, that we talked about. Yes. Cast a read magic and just start going through the book and tearing pages out. Okay. Uh, so everyone else, just so you know, you do recognize the book that Akko is reading from. Well, everyone but Jules. Um, you all recognize it as the spell book that was taken off of the Vulturkin um, in the sewers back at Badger Keep. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you see him looking through it, flipping through pages, and then ripping some pages out and just ripping them in half and, and throwing the pages in the fire. Only one page does he do that to. Okay. I didn't know if it was one or two pages long. What it was, was just, that page? just the one. I, I can guess what was on that page. What was it? It's something that we don't need to talk about. He'll get an eyebrow raised, but nothing more. Tell me, Master Runesmith, you're... Your axe and your armor, did you forge those yourself? I did. It's one You're of the really quite uh, something the to behold. Trials. Have you ever wielded a magic blade before? I can't say I've had the pleasure. He uh, reaches over and he grabs his axe and he holds it out to you. Uh, I'll take it with two hands, a bit reverently. I'm going to as back your, away slowly. As your hands grasp the wood, um, you feel this tingle move across your knuckles. Um, and after a moment, you look up from the the blade um, to everyone around the fire, and it almost seems as if the flames 
are moving a little bit slower as if you can actually see how the wisp of the flame moves as opposed to it jumping from place to place in your vision oh my a lot of people believe that with enchanted armory particularly weapons um that there's some divine pact that when you swing it you're just better with it that, that somehow the magic just makes you hit things better they don't think about the how and so the first time you touch a magical blade uh people forget uh or don't know what to expect in that particular case um but in this particular case uh you all should experience at least once you can feel free to pass the blade around magic weapons slow the world around you just a little bit sometimes the more enchanted they are the slower things become so you can see where you need to strike you take all that martial prowess that you've built up and now you know where to apply it best it doesn't give you foresight like some of the greatest mages can uh, but it gives you that little bit of insight that's where the magic really works it's incredible the world sharpens and comes into focus that's the true so, power of a magic blade. So an apprentice wielding a blade like that uh, could be the equivalent of a, a journeyman wielding a mundane blade. I would say no, um, because the skill that you have is still the skill that you have. If I take an expert swordsman and I put him against a squire, I could give the squire a highly enchanted blade. But at the end of the day... The expert's still going to win because the expert knows how to move through the motions correctly. And he has built up that insight through natural progression. He would wield well, the blade more effectively. So they enhance uh, existing skill. Exactly. I'll indicate like a few feet away from the fire in the crowd and just sort of say, may I? Of course. And I'll go through a few forms with it to just feel it out it feels exceptional you feel this this insight that he's talking about you can feel how you can see things moving as you're moving with it none of the sharp jarring motions of reality are there it's like going from like 15 fps up to 60 fps you have that right. smooth transition that's happening no none of that that glitchy back and forth shit. Um, you, uh, you just feel that Ju instinctual insight. Jules will pick up a one of the apples and look at him and say, think fast, and throw it right at his face. Nice. Make an attack roll with a plus three. I will do that. Not my cabbages. Your blade keenly slices through the apple dissecting it straight down the middle, um, causing the two halves to move around you and, and land on the ground on either side. Uh, can't help but grin at that. If you knew the right words, you would have made some toasted apples right there, too. Is that so? I. He holds his hand that's, out to you. That's delightful. I'll pass it back. He sets it back down. Well, it's um, starting to get late. Um, I do have to hit back out on the road early uh, to make my way to to Shaw Nor. Um, but uh, any anything else I can do for you before the evening closes? Uh, out of curiosity, have you been to the City of Gold recently? Um, I mean the last year. Okay, that's where we're heading after uh, Fort Stead. So I was wondering if you had any news, any recent news from of it. Not recent news. Uh, gaudy place. Um, very tall. Very, very tall. I mean, I guess they don't call it the Land of Towers or nothing. Uh, but I don't quite like the aesthetic of the town. Appreciate their gold, not their aesthetic. Uh, Kip will hand him a folded piece of paper. Uh, just... A rune you may not have come across as a, a, by way of thank you for your hospitality. 
he and your fire up and takes a look. Uh, it's uh, Fey Rune of Friendship. He looks it over for a moment um, and then folds it back up. I appreciate your your hospitality. Hi, that was that rune was uh, given to me long ago by uh, people that I consider very close. It can be a powerful thing in the right hands. We'll see what I can do with it with time. Hi. Well, hey, I'm going to uh, turn in. Yes. Uh, never mind. Rest well. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and your fire. Feel free to yes, enjoy the fire you. however long you need. Akko, second watch per usual? Of course. I'm going to re-up my enchantments and then turn in. Okay. Um, I'll take third watch as usual. I'll go for I'll it first. That's why. Um, Major you all go, bad, of course. You all go through your watches for the evening, um, but it's a quiet evening. Um, you don't find anything approaching your camp. Um, there doesn't appear to be anything flying overhead or any shadows moving around it regularly as you, as you sleep. And soon morning's back upon you. Uh, Stannis comes out of his wagon. Uh, I'm going to be leaving. Uh, is there anything I can do for you before I go? Interest you in any wares? It'll rich for our blood, I think. I'm afraid Perhaps. we're still uh, still poor adventurers and living up to the stereotype of poor adventurers. None of us are sneaky, you could say. <laughs> uh, if I could, though, uh, my name is Kip Thatcher. If, uh, if you could be so kind, if the urge strikes you, whenever you find yourself uh, in a major area of the Imperium, uh, if you could send notice to me by way of the hold... Uh, it may be that we would uh, have jingle in our pockets and uh, wish to peruse your wares at that point. Um, I can't. I can't promise anything. Um, oh, I. But uh, probably a better arrangement to that is when you have a little bit more jingle in your pouch, you send word to me by the hold. Oh, I. Uh, the the alternative to that also is if you ever find a task that uh, is beneath you. Uh, we happen to know a party of adventurers that are are willing to work for a fair price. <laughs> I admire the spirit. It still has to go through the guild you get. Well, I can oh, always I... request you through the guild. Um, there. You can make special I... requests like that, but I, I appreciate the gumption. Um, yes, we, we call ourselves the Knights of Luna. Knights of Luna. Like yeah, the moon. That's, that's Luna over there, sunning herself. Oh, Interesting. Um, She's the most potent combatant in our band, believe it or not. Boy, does she look it. I go grumbles not anymore. Uh, Lass, could I have a word with you? He points to Laura. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, he he walks over to the front of his uh his wagon as he starts hitching up his horses. I'll join um, him. Your name sounds terribly familiar and I don't know where I know it from um, she she purses her lips and looks off to the side um, uh, my if you don't want name... to tell me I, I understand <laughs> but the name and, and <laughs> just something about you I feel like I've met you before um, you probably had heard of my father, but my full name is Alara and Deli and Avalara Ross. Um, of Voon. Your pappy was the king. Yes. <laughs> Terrible business there. Yes, it was. He was. He was. He was of terrible business. I don't. I don't know all the the politic and and uh, and information surrounding that whole business, um, but 
I did meet your father once or twice passing through that area of the land. Um, you, you did. I mean, it's it's one of the the furthest holdings of the Imperium. Um, mm -hmm. Your father never struck me as a a terrible person when I met him. He wasn't always like that. Um, I think with the disappearance of my mother, something went and hinged in him. Um, I, 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 I was quite young when he was deposed. Well, um, like I said, I don't know all the story there. Um, and you, my heart feels for your family. Um, Thank you. Like I said, when I did know him, he seemed a good man, honest and forthright in the deals that I had with him. Um, especially for my brother. Um, he helped my brother out of a tough place. Um, but like I said, I, I just, the first name struck me and I felt like I knew it. I might have seen you when you were a sprig of a, a girl. Um, it's possible. I think about it. Well, um, um, I am but, heading back that way. Uh, my plan is to head back into the Accords. Um, do you wish me to carry any words back that way for you? Um, I'm st I'm still gathering my my confidence to head back there myself. Um, I'm not sure what awaits me, but it is still my homeland, and it is still a kingdom that I swear to protect. It's still your birthright, I would assume, unless that it is been... still my birthright. Um, currently, there is a a seneschal uh, holding that place, and if I prove myself, then it is my birthright. But sometimes, and as it should be, rights are not simply given. In some cases, birthrights need to be earned. Well, um, like I said, I am passing back through that way. Um, and I'll be happy to give you some word of, of what I see when I go there. At least for the, the kindness that your father showed me when I met him last. I would appreciate it. Thank you. Um, there are not many people there I know, obviously, except for the Seneschal. Um, but should I head back that, that way, I hope that we can cross paths again. Uh, I've enjoyed your all's company in the evening. I wouldn't mind having you again. Wonderful. He finishes hitching they up the horse and then starts uh, making his way up to the rider's uh, bench. Well, I wish you all journey ahead to be swift, profitable, and exciting. I believe that's what adventurers love, yes? Yes, absolutely. Yes. It's so... Good luck. Mm -hmm. And he... As to you. Hitches his horses and he begins taking off in the direction you all came from. Hey, okay, well, let's get on the road then, shall we? Indeed. Wait, are we camp bedding down or... You already slept for the evening. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Yep. All right, so you yeah, all... We did not get attacked by high women. <laughs> you did not get attacked <laughs> by high women. I just didn't roll. No, there were no rolls for this particular... That's uh, why I was confused. Stay. Um, so you all hit back on the road, heading east uh, to the fort. Um, again, the journey is pretty nice. However, about midday, um, it does start to rain. Um, a light summer rain. It's not thundering or cracking lightning across the area, but just a, a drizzling rain that comes down um, sort of pulling the day down with it. How uh, how warm is it? It's probably about 65, 68 degrees. It's a warm rain. Johnny, you're muted. Pip is going to hole up in the back of the wagon. He's been writing furiously in his journal ever since they left camp. Like, almost like a man possessed. Well, luckily, your wagon is pretty much <laughs> brand new, so there's none of the... <laughs> The wear and tear on the canvas for the covering, um, you find that it's a, a nice place to keep uh, dry from the rain. Oi, Imnos. Mm. 
Would you, would you mind uh, driving for me for the rest of the day? I'll, I'll take your next shift. I, I, I have to get this out of my head before I forget. Not at all. I rather enjoy the weather. He, uh, he gave me a fantastic idea. I just have to figure out how to do it. Emnos, I can stay, stay up front with you. The rain doesn't bother me. I appreciate the company. Oi, Akko. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with any uh, minor arcane spells uh, that uh, you could uh, enchant a quill uh, to automatic write, so to speak? If something exists, it would save me quite a bit of time. Otherwise, I'm going to have to start from scratch. Um... Can I technically do that with prestidigitation? No, there is a, a very specific spell that does that. Give me one second and I will tell you what it is. Not automated, certainly, but could I move it? Wait, with prestidigitation, <clears throat> can, can you... Like, could you make a basic drawing by focusing on parchment with that? I think amanuensis is what you're looking for. That's it. That's the spell. Uh, I know I can make stuff with it, just why I tend to make statues, but... You can make small little things. Like, you can make, like, a small little work of art, but eventually yeah, but they're, those... they're totally those things, crappy. Yeah, they're, they're not good at all. It's like a, a kindergartner finger painting. Yeah, we, that's why we, I handle them to the kids. If we can figure out how to do this, we could make a fair bit of money on the side for for our little party. Uh, it'd be actually invaluable for adventurers and travelers alike. Uh, what I'm thinking is a, a quill. Uh, you press a piece of parchment on top of another piece of parchment, like a map or a book or anything that's non Uh Tap the quill to it and it immediately transfers the content onto your parchment, obviously, unless it's bespelled but it'd be a fantastic way to quickly copy maps and uh, journals or things like that. You are familiar with a cantrip, the, the amniosis uh, spell that allows you to copy writing and, and things like that. Yeah, there, there is a spell that does that, but I don't know it. I'll figure out a way to make it work. I might pick up a scroll the next time we're near an obelisk. It would be relatively cheap. Yeah. I... I'm excited about this, though. This is this is what I took magical theory for seven times. I double checked through all the stuff I pulled out of that book just to make sure none of those is what he's looking for. It's not. And they're not. No, I know. Eventually, the day uh, drags on into dusk as you all pull into the outskirts of uh, Fort Stead. Um, it's easy enough to get directions to where Randy's lodges uh, as you're passing a few people on the road. Um, and you soon find yourself outside of Randy's lodge. Oh, sweet, a map! <laughs> Very good. Um, I walk into Randy's lodge. You have control of your tokens. Feel free to move around. Ah, sweet! Kip is still in the wagon. He hasn't even noticed that they've stopped moving. Kip, uh, you can uh, you can fake your way through a scroll, can't you? Hey! Kip, put your shoes on. We're here. What? Already? Yep. Uh, damn. Uh, all right. I, I'm good at stopping point as any, I suppose. Come on, well, Luna. Time to become a god. You all walk inside. Um, it's a, a fairly warm and inviting tavern. Um, you see that there's a few patrons here sitting at tables, having some food and drink. Um, there's a, a man sitting at the piano playing a small little tune. Um, the Dorvan man behind the bar looks up as you all walk. He's like, hi, welcome to you. Hello. Hey. What kind of drink can I get you? Um, well... We are here, um, and I, I, I show him the the cage we took from the adventures. Oh, yeah, you're the ones who are going to come bash some rats for me, eh? Yes. Perfect. I mean, I've been bashing and bashing and bashing. I can, I can only bash them so much. My arms got so damn tired. We're real good at bashing. Well, that's good. I'm paying good gold for this, too, so you guys better bash the living shit out of them. Well, we're bashing on the way to a bash. This will be great. You guys want any food right or drink before you get to the bashing? 
What size rats are we talking? Just oh, you like know, regular size rat. Like, uh, wait, what time of day cat? is it? It's uh, it's starting to get night at this point. Okay. Yeah, rain's still because... coming down, but it is dark outside at this stage. Right, you know, thank you. we could just help ourselves to a drink and send the expert down. Oh, that's oh, that's you. No. You know that. <laughs> oh, here, you guys want some drinks? Some whiskey in your bellies? Ooh. I'm going to pass. Um, perhaps after we take care of this rat issue. Oh, all right. I mean, It'll be a reward. You guys are the experts ourselves. here, not me. It's it's like a reward. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll reward you in all the drinks you want. There you go, Kip. It'll be something to look forward to. I'll just exactly. take it out of that fifty gold. But yeah, you can have all the drinks you want. <laughs> there it is. Yep. Uh, which way uh, are they in the tavern proper? Are they in the uh, cellar? No, they're down in the basement. Okay. Here, follow Hi. me. Follow him. It's a tight squeeze back here, but it should be okay. Here's the way on down <laughs> to the basement. All right. Well, good luck down there. Give me one second, everybody, and I will transition you. Where we're going, we don't need luck. We'll go back. But we there. do need light. I think we always need luck, though. We <laughs> have for yourself, light. Emnos. Yeah, I am speaking for myself. <laughs> <laughs> you silly humans. Are, are you actually, do you actually say that? Yeah. Joel, do you actually say that, that we need light? Yes. Oh, I reach out. I, I cast light on the tip of my staff. That will help quite a bit. I Kip covers his eyes. Damn it! It's not that bright. That bright. It is what you can see in the fucking dark, V. Who's going um, down first? I can see I will. the dark. Okay, Kip, so we both know that's not how dark vision works. Alara's leading. Give me party I don't order shit. here. Who's Jules after Alara? Second. Okay, Jules. Jules second. Third? Uh, Kip jumps onto Jules's back. Jules falls. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> How much, how much does Kip weigh? Uh, 160, 170. Jules falls. Ah! Yeah, I'll, I'll help them both up. All right. Kip jumps onto Alara's back. He, he dangles there while I walk. All right, I'm transitioning I'm, you guys over now. I'm your tail gunner. Akko will take no, up the rear. Not. Yeah, I'll, I'll go right in front of Akko, me and the, the rat slayer god. These will be the most spectacular misses you've ever seen flash over your shoulder. You have perfectly uh, fine legs. You're taller quick, than I am. Real quick for everybody. Does everyone have vision? I do. Yes. 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 All right. You um, are in control of your tokens. Jules is going to go ahead and cast summon monster two. Okay. And summoning 1d3 celestial dogs. All right. This is, uh, the, the floor is correct. It's cobblestone, not hard-packed uh, dirt. It is cobblestone. Yeah. Johnny, oh. out of curiosity, how tall is Kip? Uh... Give me one second here for the dogs. Exceptionally tall for a human in the Dark Ages. Let me check. Yeah, so I want you to know that Alara is maybe an inch taller than I am. He tucks his legs up real high. He's six foot three. <laughs> dog, dog. Where are the dogs? There his, we go, his, dogs. His toes are dragging on the ground. God. Uh, give me a... Oh, you got three dogs? Little glowy boys. Doggy! All right. So when the dogs appear ahead of Alara... I assume that's an okay place for me to put them, Dave? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, when they appear, you all start hearing squeaking... Uh, resounding throughout the uh, the entire room. We are going to go into initiative. Jules yells, get him, boys! Uh, let, me, let me clear this. <clears throat> it's going to be a fucking massacre. I feel like you're trying to stand up my, my uh, god companion here. No, I wanted to give her backup. I just expected her to be close to the front. Everybody jumped into, onto the stairs before I could. 
Um, I do not have control of the dog tokens, but... Give me one second, I will give you them. access. Okay. That's not sure. I don't know why. Luna's having a lazy day. No, Luna goes on my initiative, which is a 14. I'll change it to that. It's a lot of rats. He did say it was a lot of rats. That's true. All right. Sending order. There we go. All right. So first up is going to be Kip. That one. All right. Give me the rules. Does he have cover? Uh, no, he does not. He is just out there. Okie doke. Uh... Nice. Holy shit. That's a good shot. Uh, that will absolutely hit that little rat. I am not seeing any of the rats. Your position is blocked because of the wall <laughs> that's next to you. Oh, okay. Well, I wasn't sure how Kip was... Oh, Kip's riding the paladin. Okay. No, I went ahead. Oh, Phrasing. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you just roll max damage on a rat? I did. <laughs> So the the green smashing energy of your Eldritch Blast shoots out of your hand with a kickback that blows your arm backward for a moment as it Spirit whooshes gun. across the, the floor, slamming into this rat and just utterly annihilating it. Tossing its body back against the wall, splatting it like a blob against the back. That's one, Luna. Catch up. All right, rat will act. Squeak, 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 squeak as it comes around the corner. Ah! Double move to here. Ah! Jules, you're up. You should have control of the dogs now, too. You're muted. Sorry, I'm moving my token just so that I have the dog's vision. Yeah. Um, so this dog will go right underneath Kip's legs. This dog is going to, let's see, they've got 40 foot move speed. He's going to make that. So the dogs will rush forward. Uh, Jules will, will step in to monitor everything. Uh, and they're each going to attack their prospective rats. All right. Let's see what these uh, prospective rat slayers can do. Nine so the, will miss. 18, 17 will absolutely hit. Yep. Yeah. So the, the, the two that are attacking the one up top. Okay. Should hit. Does anybody else find it ironic that the cleric of socialism is standing back and supervising someone else doing the work? <laughs> and He's and delegating. that'll conclude my turn. All right. How much damage am I looking at? Oh, my apologies. Uh, I guess they got to roll that too. Don't you show me up, Jules dogs. Three and two, five. All right. This rat is still alive as these dogs just start tearing into it. Um, they start pulling at its, its fur and its legs, but it manages to, to squirrel out, but it still has some jagged cuts along its body now. Are these are these rats evil by chance? Um, do you have a means by which to just know that anytime you want? No, 
I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Alara, are the rats evil? <laughs> My turn is not until last. Imnos, you are up. Okie dokie. Ooh, a bunch of rats. I'm going to go down this way, hop over this barrel, and try and cut this rat what good. Yeah, you step up on the barrel and jump over the railing, come down on the rat. Yeah. 20 Slash hit. that rat. Excellent. For 10 points of damage. 10 points will slay that rat as your blade cleaves into it cutting it almost in half. And that's going to be me. All right. Rat here will squeak across as he rushes you, Imnos. Mm -hmm. um, he jumps off the the decking as he tries to latch into you. Um, does a 18 hit you? That hits me precisely. All right. You're going to take two points of damage. And I need oh. a fortitude save, please. And ratted. Uh, what did it say? Uh, you feel fine. For a moment, you, you feel that sensation of burning pain like you did when you were in the sewers, and you quickly reach down and rip the rat off of your groin and toss it on the ground uh, before uh, anything worse can happen to you. All right, um, Luna, which I just assume is Fee and yes. Luna. Yes. You are both um, up. All right. Um, I'm assuming I can see this rat there. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can see anything that you can see. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, I can move over there too. Um, I'm going to attack this rat, and Luna's going to attack the right. rat. So I will roll for me first, since I have the much worse attack. <laughs> what kind of weapon are you using again? Quarterstaff. Quarterstaff, okay. Mm -hmm. Rat squash and stick. The rat bash and stick right there. Weasel stomping day. 13 will absolutely hit as you bring your quarter staff down on it. All right. I think it's what a D. Is it a D4 or a D6? I think it's a D6. Okay. Yeah, okay. Five damage is still up, Luna. And then, yeah, Luna will attack the same one. No. No, Luna snaps her jaws at it, but it manages to to do a belly roll off to the side, and she misses. My All world right. view is shattered. You don't know what's going on. She's too distracted. There's too many rats. It's all these new dogs. And the everywhere. dogs. It's too many smells. All right. Uh, speaking of the dogs, the uh, first, the rat up near the two dogs in the north is going to attack the northern dog. Uh, does a 13 hit? Um, a 13 will not hit. Okay. Dog in the north. Uh, that guy is dead. This one will rush over to try and help his rat compatriot. Uh, plus two for the flank. Uh, 16 hit? 16 will hit. All right. It's going to be three damage. And I need a fortitude save for the dog. Um, okay. Okay. Seventeen. That dog is perfectly A-OK. -okay. Alora, you're up. Okay, excellent. I'm going to... 
go up here and attack. Oh, wait, actually, uh, can I can I go from here to teleport to here? Sure, you're using right. your ability. Yeah, because okay. it's the only way I can make that I can make that movement. What does it look like? Um, there's a flash it. of light, and I'm no longer where I was. And there's a flash of light up, and I'm in front of that rat. Hardcore. Yeah, what so the you, fuck? All, you all essentially watch Alara in her armor rush past Jules up to the the rat, and then there's a strike of light where she is, and she's gone. And then immediately after a, a secondary strike of light, as she appears in the northern corner of the room. I'm gonna attack that rat. Give me dim bones. Is it an evil rat? Unfortunately, an 11 will Fuck not you. successfully <laughs> strike that rat. Uh. Um, your blade buries into the ground next to it um, as it manages to just kind of do like a little jump to the side, a little skitter. Ah. Uh. All right. Next up will be the rat that's on you. But a nine will not hit you, I'm fairly certain. Uh, another rat will come up from the west. Move over here as a double move. Akko, you're up. All right, so we'll walk up to the top of the stairs. And... Can't really do anything, so cast Mage Armor. Okay. Rats. Another rat will come up from over here. Double move. And then that rat is dead. Kip, back around to you. Pew pew! Uh, that will absolutely hit for eight damage. Yep. Which one were you striking at? Okay. Eight. It takes the blast on its snout, blowing away half of its face, um, leaving this skeletal two-face looking like thing um, as it's, it's still up and moving, but it looks like it's just doing that by some sort of like remembered function for its body. Um, oh, 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 kill it, kill it now! As it's like, it's like little, like in pain and, and hissing. Oh, oh. Uh, the middle rat here is going to attack the dog. Uh, 15? Name is Kobe. Oh, Kobe. That'll Kobe. Hit Kobe. Fifteen hit Kobe. Does Kobe? Um, uh, Kobe beef. Kobe will take three points of damage. Forty-two save, please. Ten. All right. Noted. Jules, you're up. Um, I'm gonna I'm going to put my hand out and say, Cooper, Oakley, Mac, it's your turn. And three more dogs appear. <laughs> behind uh I have behind no idea rats. what's going on, but I love this. Are, are you casting summon monster two again? Yes. Okay, so you won't be able to. So as a reminder about the summon monster rules for, for this game, oh. um, you can't cast the same monster level summon that you already have actively going. So you could do summon monster one, but you couldn't do summon monster two again while the summon monster two is still active. That is completely fair. My apologies. Um, Just to keep will... so many things from swathing the board is all. Yeah, I completely forgot about that. Um, that's fine. I will uh, I will instead cast um, a spiritual weapon. Okay. Uh, let me... I, I, did, I forgot to get your ninja star made. Uh, so in the meantime, you can have uh, I don't know, this face hooker. Here you go. Uh, let, yeah, let that me seems give you, about right. Let me give you access to this face hugger. Socialism. There you go. You got your socialist face hugger. Okay. So uh, let's swing that right over there. Okay. That'll and, take a full uh, round to, to come into being. Yeah. And then Kobe's got to make some attacks. Okay. He gets a plus two for flanking. 
So 12. Yep. 12 will hit. Or sorry, uh No, the 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 10 was the uh was oh, the four to the hit. other dog. Yeah, so 21. That will absolutely hit. Okay. Yeah. For four damage. Four damage to the metal one who hasn't taken anything yet. Got it. And then Max and Oscar are going to attack. Okay. Are uh, they continue to attack the same one? Yeah, and that's that a 12, one. not a 14. Uh, all right. So 12 will still hit. Okay. For four. It is still up by the smallest of hairs on its chin. Um guessing a 10 doesn't hit. 10 will miss. Come on, Oscar. Get your head in the game. All right. Mnos, you're up. All right. I'm going to tumble away from this wheat ratty. Okay. Give me a tumble roll, please. Lead. That will yeah. absolutely get you away from him and pretty much anywhere you want to be in this area. Hop over to there okay. and Imnos will take his hand and pull it along the flat of his blade, which burst into flames, and he will sweep it uh, horizontally and a gout of flame will spray out in a 30-foot cone. So that should get these three rats it will and get no those one three else. It'll get those three rats plus the socialist face hugger. It's a it's a thirty foot cone. Yeah, I don't think the socialist face hugger will take fire damage though. It does not. All right. Is he immune to fire? Uh, the oh, it's a spiritual, spiritual weapon. weapon. Oh, I yeah. keep I keep thinking of a summon creature because I keep calling <laughs> it a face hugger. Um, <laughs> that's my fault. So okay, cool. Uh, what do I need so to roll here? Saves. Yeah, they they all get a DC 14 reflex save for half. All right. They'll take 10 damage, 5 on a successful save. Got it. Fail, fail, save. All right. So this one, top one gets burned to a crisp. Middle one gets burned to a crisp. The one directly next to you manages to flatten its body against the ground and only take partial flame damage across its back um as some of its its tail lights on fire like some sort of macabre birthday candle all right rats uh the rat on fee and luna is going to snap at fee uh fee does uh, a 20 probably hits you right uh yes all right yes. uh you're gonna take three points of damage and i need all a right. fortitude save Okay. Hey, Wade, did this one uh, save from damage? Yes. Okay. 15. 15, you are fine. Um, all right. All right. Uh, Luna and Fee, you are up. All right. I am going to let Luna attack first since she has things to prove. Redeem your name. 15 will Great hit. Great rat slayer. Oh, I haven't rolled for her yet. That was oh. my fort save. Oh, I keep being confused. <laughs> Sorry. A, tw a 21. <laughs> that will absolutely Up of the Rat Slayer. Uh... Six points of damage. And much as you all are all used to, she manages to lock her jaws around the entire body of this rat and just starts whipping her head back and forth as you hear crack, crack, crack of its spine breaking, um, and it falls limp uh, from her body dead. Uh, oh, gross. Uh, let's see. Can I skirt past this rat without it attacking me? Um, you can make a tumble check to try and skirt past it. <laughs> No. <laughs> I don't think that would end up in my favor. Oh, maybe it would. You never know. 
yeah, we'll see. Uh, I'm a, I'm trying to get over here, which okay. I can do, but you know, rat. Yeah, you you would need to make the tumble check to try and get past it. No. <laughs> no, unfortunately, as you start moving past it, you try and like hop the rail a little bit over the stairs, but you catch your foot and it drops you back to the ground. It's it's going to snap at your leg as you move past it. All right. Uh, but 12 will probably miss you. Yep. Uh, am you, I still able to... You keep moving. Yep. Okay. Just gets the attack of opportunities you pass. Yep. I'm just checking to make sure everything over here is dead or if there's anything over there. Yeah, you just see the lone rat corpse that kept blasted into the wall. Good deal. All right. I'll move the, the great rat slayer with me. All right. Uh, Northern Doggy is getting snapped at. Um, ooh, that's going to be a crit. Um, oh, Max. All right. So that's going to be nine points of damage to oh, Max. Uh, Max. Max disappears. Max disappears. All right. And it's going to stay there. Uh, the other rat on the other side is going to attack um, the other dog. Oscar. Oscar's going to get some bites. Is Possibly like 12. Uh, no. Oscar Almost. manages to jump out of the way. Alara, you're up. Redeem your mighty blade. Well, I'm going to do the thing again. Yeah, there. That, that'll do it. <laughs> Give me that beautiful critical damage. Angry at such a rookie move, like burying your blade into the floor, you pull it back and skewer forward with expert grace as you pierce this rat, killing it on the spot with one blow. Right. Great. Um, if I move... Is there a place I can move where I can actually like flank one of these rats with the dog? Yep. You can move right here. That's where I thought. And I'll do that. All right. You and the dog will have flanking on that particular rat. Uh, that rat's dead. That rat's dead. Akko, you're up. Uh, let's see. Uh, Akko's going to one, two, three, four, five, six, and stab that rat to the north. Got it. Where are you? There you are. That's a one. I'm uh, going to re-roll that. You going to use your inspiration on it? Yep. All right. Reroll it. <laughs> you managed to miss, but slightly better, because uh, your blade comes out, and Alara, for a moment, you think that spear tip is going right for your face, <laughs> but instead he manages to whip it to the left just a little bit, just barely missing you. I believe that Akko's trying to kill me. Political assassination. <laughs> That was the real intrigue all along. <laughs> all right. Uh, the lone rat with Emnos. Um, he, with the flames and everything else that just happened, he's actually going to withdraw. Seems reasonable. Skirt past everybody with his withdraw immunity to attacks opportunity as he rushes up and he dives under this barrel here to the north. And you lose track of him as he disappears into whatever tight space he has found himself with in that barrel. Kip, you're up. <clears throat> Which barrel did he jump into? You may not see it because you don't have line of sight on it. Yeah, okay. you, you don't have line of sight to it. You just saw him rush to the north and then to the right. You 
see three big wooden casts stack, stacked on top of each other here. Yep. I think I fire and miss at this guy. Uh, ten will unfortunately miss, uh, even with a touch attack on that one. All right. Uh, that rat is dead. Jules, you're up. Um, I am going to uh, redirect my boy Kobe. to there okay and uh, oscar's gonna get real brave move right there but they want that flanking legit i'm real proud of them for 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 doing that so uh kobe's gonna go first on the uh the right on the right plus two for flanking uh only a nine uh so that will miss fortunately yep uh and then oscar is going to attempt the same threat 23 that will absolutely hit it was getting real wily there with, with Oscar, but he wasn't fast enough for Max. Yep. Two uh, damage. Two points. All right, that's the first damage it's taken as uh, as Max clamps him. Uh, and the... I don't think I can move and attack with the spiritual weapon on the same turn. Um, I don't know. Uh, if you want to look that up, if you do get it, just let me know and we'll, we'll let you yeah. do it. Go ahead and uh, do that. And no, sure up. Okay, okay. Um, I think the move there. Fifteen. Go back up the rat slayer. Well, I don't see anything in here at the moment. Does not appear to be occupied by any rats in need of slain. Uh, then I'll just hang out here with Fee and Luna and look around. Right. I'll just give it a moment. <laughs> All right, Fee, Luna, you're up. Uh, I'll turn and look at Luna and be like, Luna, find the rats. And I'll just point at the room. And while she's circling around, uh, because she has scent tracking. Yep. Give me uh, a survival she... check for her. Sure. Oh, let me see. It's not my survival check. I no. need to look and see what her bonus to survival is. I believe she gets a bonus too because of her scent ability. Plus yep. four, yeah. Plus four? It's okay. a plus seven total. Plus seven? Thank you. Yep. If I can roll that in the right screen. <laughs> plus seven. Um, yep. Uh, Luna will Can she... move around I mean, the room. Yeah, I was going to say, she's taking time with it, so... Yep. She will move um, around the room sniffing, and then return back to you and just sit at your feet, looking up at you, sort of expectantly. Alright, while she's doing that, I'm going to walk the other direction. Okay. And bang the base of all these crates and boxes with my quarterstaff. Okay. Figuring, like, if there's rats behind it, they'll make a noise or they'll, they'll scurry out and I just listen. Um, yeah, you go around, you start banging on all the little things in here and doesn't seem to get any peeping or uh, skittering. Alright, I I think we're clean here. Imnos. Excellent. Alright. Alright, rat to the left is Wait. gonna... Yeah? The rat on the right gets attacked uh, by the spiritual weapon. Got it. Uh, What's a 10? Uh, rolled a 20 for 10 damage. That will kill that rat. As your spiritual ninja star buries into its back. Believe it! Um, Alright. Um, actually, seeing that happen, this last rat in the room um, squeaks and will also withdraw. As he double moves diving into the barrels, uh, into the cracks and nooks, and disappears. And that will bring us out of combat. All right. I'm going to... You boys, you boys be good. I'm going to search around to see if there's... Uh, see if there's like a hole or something in the walls because obviously that rat had to have gone somewhere and Randy did say that uh, or the guy at the bar that I assume is Randy 
did say that no matter how many times he kills these rats, they keep coming back. So I'm going to look for some, like, opening or passageway or something. Sure. Give me perception. Absolutely. Wait, I'm going to do the same down in this area where we were first okay. fighting. Um, do you want survival for Luna and perception for me, or...? Uh, just perception. Okay. Yeah. Can I help out up in this room? Sure. Yeah, you can You can aid. So, that's mine. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> you don't even need to bother with Luna. I, that's that's okay. gonna be good enough. Tell me what my elephant eyes see, damn it! <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. So, first off, Fee, you look around this main room. Um, nothing's really coming out at you. You you check all the different little nooks and crannies that you can. Um, nothing really shows itself to you. You do have the light spell still activated, um, so you're able to see in sort of the dark little corners, and you're pretty certain that there's no rats hiding anywhere in this room. Um, Alara, you and Emnos together, um, you're searching this top room. Most mm -hmm. particularly, you're you're looking at this bottom right corner where you saw that the uh, rats were scurrying into. Um, uh -huh. You you move around and you can see between the barrels. The rest of the walls in here are all made of stone, but when you look between the barrels to the wall behind it, it looks like that wall is made of wood. Okay. So you think that uh, there, there may be something more back there than you can see currently, but you would have to move the barrels out of your way. I will start moving the barrels. Okay. These are particularly heavy barrels, so it will require I'll a pitch it check. and give her a hand. Okay. Okay. I make her big. <laughs> uh, can I fit down here even if I am big? Uh, oh, it would yeah, be a, the, kind of a squeeze like? at the top. You'd be hunched over in here. Um with wise you'd be okay, but height wise, uh, you're really pushing it. Hey, miss. Um, but honestly, without that, you really don't need it. Between you <laughs> and Nose, you're both strong enough to start moving these barrels to the side. Okay. Um, and give me one second here. And you find a door that's got a a, a crack in it. Um, that looks like where the rats have been squeezing their way in and out of into a passage beyond. Okay, so obviously, uh, can I open the door or yeah. is it locked? Like, no, it's it's starting right. to rot, um, which is how it's cracked. Um, it's starting to kind of like as you as you grab the ring to open the door, the ring comes right out of it with the dry rot and the mold that's been growing on this door. Um, but you're easily able to kind of push it to the side and, and see beyond it. You can see a small little corridor uh, that dog legs into stairs that descend downward. Okay, excellent. Um, I will start moving towards, uh, moving down that path. I, like I letting everyone know that uh, we found a passageway. I don't want to go against anybody's sense of adventure, but um, the contract was just to kill the rats. The main contract don't... was more to solve the rat problem. Yeah. If the rats are coming from there. We're going also, that way. if the rats ran in there, then we didn't well kill them, did we? Good point. This, this, this isn't me searching for more adventure. It's, this problem is not solved until like we find out where these rats are coming from. We can, in good conscience, accept the money if we haven't solved the problem to the best of our abilities. I mean, you, know, you guys don't have to guys. Have excuses. The bartender. I can go check with the bartender if he wants us to explore the keep creepy cavern underneath his bar, or if he wants to just break it up. No, don't ask. Let's just go. Come on. Let's go. He, he might say no. Yeah, we don't want him to say no. Why? Did... <laughs> what if this is... Let's Let's work more money. Think smarter, not harder. Ah, no, it's dark! But, don't, but, but what if there's... Uh, yeah, you uh, can see in the dark. Or not. I'm, hold on. I want. I, I have. To, I have a very important question to ask everyone. Who here knows how to brick something up? Like, who here is really good at masonry and stuff like that? That would not be me. 
Would that be no. a craft or a knowledge? Well, that kind of falls under his responsibility. But we'd be paid for it. That's why I'm asking <laughs> if he wants us to go ahead and do it. I think you might be muted, Wade. Oh, I apologize. It would be a craft to do it. It'd be craft masonry. We could fake it. I mean, if you want to go up and ask, go ahead. We could There's break it no up with rat corpses. Asking, but while, I... Okay, while somebody's asking, the rest of us just go down the hallway. I'm just what if he go doesn't with you. want us to go into his weird crypt? And that's all the more reason to go. Then I'd ask what he's hiding. Fine. Let's go. All right, Come on, well, Kip. Kip, you did well in your remedial goodness. All right. Am I the only person here that didn't take that class? It was an easy A, okay? Please I line yourself up. I did, for nine I did not years. take that class. Please line yourself up in your descending order. Uh, single file, please. Oh, well, I would be at the head. <laughs> All right, perfect. Give me one second here. I love being in the middle. I feel so safe. You're so safe. Between two ladies? Oh, no, you're not between two ladies. That's Kip. Ah! I, that's a, a lady and a, a gravy-haired <laughs> lad. I don't think Kip's between... I think no <laughs> one's between us, Coda. No, I know. <laughs> I mean, you could probably walk through Alara's legs like tree trunks right now. I'm very tall. So is she at the moment. I don't think we actually did that. Also, wait for me. Real quick, everybody. So um, the map I'm about to move you to, you guys are going to start off in the bottom right-hand corner of this map. Now, you all are going to notice that most of your tokens are off the map because of the way that you're entering into this place. You're going to see that Alara and Fee are both already entered in the map as they move forward. Jules will move himself onto the map as appropriate, or I'll move you onto the map as appropriate, because I can't fit you all into this one space because of the transition here. So that just works. be aware of that. Okay. All right, here we go as I move you over. Whoosh. Aka was feeling so justified in grabbing this job. It is dark down here. Fee, you still have your light spell active? Yep. Okay. All right, you're in command of uh, your tokens, uh, Fee and Alara. And I'll move everybody okay. else on and go from there. Wait, in the meantime, I'm going to cast Bless on myself. Okay. Uh, bless will actually affect everybody. It's like a 30 foot oh, yeah. radius and catches everybody. All right, then I'll, I'll I'll cast bless, and everyone gets that then. Awesome. Yeah, we just let me know when like thirty minutes is up because that's how long my light spell is good for. Got it. All right, and I'll move around the corner. All right, stop where you are. Yep. It's actually, forty minutes, Dakota. We're level. Oh, you're right. We are level four. So yeah, forty minutes. All right. I, Alara, as you turn the corner, a waft of rotten meat hits your nostrils, causing you for a brief moment to gag as you turn around this corner and you see these two corpses laying down on the ground. One is just a pile of bones in the back corner. The other one is a, a sack of what you think is newly rotten flesh, but you can see the, the age and the desiccation to the bones and the skin and the meat on the body. Uh, but as you turn the corner and the light from Fee spills into the room, they both start shifting and stirring wow. and cracking up as they start pulling themselves off the ground. Oh, this isn't the contract we took. And we will What's go that sound? into initiative. Nope, nope, nope. I right. literally, Johnny, that I is what you. I say. This isn't the contract we took. Oh, God damn it. There must be a lot of rats down here. I 
I told you. Now, now we're Man. not gonna get paid for the skeletons. If we succeed at this, this is gonna taste like a level. <laughs> Spirit. Well, that's that's the shitty initiative I've been waiting for. Oh, I forgot how to roll initiative for a second. Huzzah! All right, everyone got their initiative up? Looks like it. All right, let me descend. There we go. <laughs> Um, everybody else who hasn't quite turned this corner yet, you hear this, frankly, teeth gnashing sound of bones cracking, like someone just ripped an arm in half, and this tearing of flesh, um, as whatever's going on around the corner is stirring up. Amnos, you're up. Okay, uh... Are the quarters too tight for me to get past people, or...? Uh, you could squeeze past. Okay. You're not wearing, like, super heavy armor or anything like that. Nope. Uh, ooh. I'm trying to tumble past this awful corpse. Uh, I'll actually try and get to this one. Seems like a good thing to do. Okay. Give me a tumble check. Ah, oh, damn. You're solid. You easily manage to move forward. And this thing moves so slowly as you're passing that you're able to just duck your head and move around it very easily. Excellent. Uh, this other skeleton looking fellow. Um, let's give it a. Yeah, let's give it a wolf fang strike. Okay along with Burning Blade. So the first attack will be uh, with the sword. Which might miss. Uh, 13 will in fact miss as your strike just clears right through its uh, wolf He gets a plus one on that. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, so 14. You will hit as your strike rattles its ribcage bones. Oh, perfect. Well, then I'll also give the follow-up kick, because it's free. All right, so yeah, a sword slash followed by a spin kick. And the sword will do... Do you want fire damage separately or all at once? Uh, you can give it to me all at once. Okay. That's the sword. Three. And the kick will do. I have to do this separately, unfortunately. Uh, 12 and. And 7 fire. All right. So your blade crashes through its ribs like they're just brittle planks, um, smashing bones, splinters going everywhere. Um, as your kick comes up between its legs, catching its hip, by your spreading up its spine, um, as you kick forward, dislodging its entire body, um, hurling this pile of bones into the corner as it falls limp and pieces splaying out all over. Um, Excellent. It is clearly not going to be getting back up if if you are trusting your instincts, which you should. <laughs> Nice. All right, that's me. Akko, you're up. You hear uh, a lot of action happening in the room beyond you. Since I'm like right here at the edge, can I just kind of peek around the corner a little bit? If you peek around the corner, all you're going to see is Fee at the end of the, the turn. Okay. Um, do I hear the sounds of battle? You absolutely hear the sounds of, of battle. You watch Emnos um, like shoot forward um, and definitely heard Emnos fighting noises. Don't, uh, don't, don't, don't look back, guys. And, uh, I guess alter self. How are you altering yourself? I, I am, uh, becoming a troglodyte. Your 
bones twist in your body as your scales take on a more lacking lustrous gleam um, as you turn into a troglodyte. Thankfully, they're roughly the same size, so I keep my clothes. You do keep your clothes. They do not rip off of you. All right. All right, who is first up here? All right. Uh, you all hear a moan as another, what is clearly a zombie, comes around the corner. And it moves up here and stops as it, it looks at Emnos. Uh, with its dead eyes contemplating what it's going to do. Um, and it's very slow, beleaguered movements. Kip, you're up. Hey, what's everybody shouting at? Ah! <laughs> it's terrifying. This is everything that you never wanted to see. When you left the academy. Uh, is this still masonry floor or? Yeah. Damn it. Uh. Panic blast. Are you attacking the one that's directly next to you? Uh, directly in front of me. Okay. Uh, the one next to you has already done or, its attack opportunity. Actually, no, the one next to me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You will still have the negative four for firing in melee. Oh, well, in that case, Badoop. All right. Give me that beautiful bean footage. Seven. No, that's the damage from 13 will hit. And, uh, just for the record, don't forget your plus one with blasts. Yep. All that right. fort save is incorrect. I thought I fixed that. Okay. That's fine. It's, it, it it's doesn't work anyway. Affected. Yeah. Yeah. It does not have an immune system to be sickened with. Um, your blast strikes in the gut, blowing <laughs> off um, its lower abdominal wall, causing intestines to pour out onto the floor. Um, but <laughs> it stays up on its feet as it stares at you with its hollow eyes. <laughs> All right, next up, this guy will move to here. This guy will move around the corner and he will move up to here. You hear a clattering of bones. And Fee, you're up. Don't ask questions, Fee. The job's not done yet, Fee. I bet your asses were not getting paid extra for this, you motherfuckers. It did say go ask. Remedial goodliness. Good Didn't words. take that class. Uh, I'm gonna. This cast, is your own choice. I'm gonna cast a uh, produce flames. All right. Uh, at the one kind of blocking the stairwell. All right. <laughs> uh. Uh, That's a touch attack, I believe. Yep. Actually, is that right? Plus three. I think that's right. I'm just double checking. Yes, that should be right. That hits. Okay. These things do not <laughs> appear to be dexterous at all <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. Um, as their bodies are slow and lumbering. Six plus four. Four right. or six points. Fire then... strikes into it. Its body immolates for a brief moment as it seems like uh, the more desiccated parts of its corpse light on fire like tender. And then I will send the Rat Slayer in. And her attack rolls a 17 because she's better than me every way. Where is she moving to? She's running past Alara. Okay. Since okay. that's, you know, still within like roughly five feet of me. Yeah. Uh, give me. Uh, she rolled a 17. 
Yes. That will absolutely hit. Da, da, da. Six points. Six points. So it's taking 12 points of damage total. All right. The Luna's teeth dig into this thing's calf um, and rip the calf right off of its leg. Um, but in the same instance, it doesn't seem perturbed very much by that that blow. Um, it, it seems to notice it less than it did, obviously, the, fire. the flame. Yeah. L Luna, spit that out. That's not tasty bones. It immediately spits it out and starts like, dry gagging. Um, not tasty. Alara, you're up. All right. Uh, For all intents and purposes, you and Luna are sharing a space right now. She's like between your legs, like bat, like biting at this thing. Yeah. Are you using your ability? Yes. You all see that crack of light as Alara disappears and reappears inside the room. Um... And I'm going to attack this thing. Fifteen? Absolutely will hit. Eight. All right, your blade bites into it. Give me one second here, folks. I gotta pull something up. One of my pages disappeared. That doesn't sound good. Oh. It doesn't sound good for us. If uh if if Wade if Wade broke his prepared stuff, we automatically win and get a level, right? Well, if he loses the zombie stats, I guess that means all the zombies are dead. Oh darn. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, I really appreciate how uh how positive you all think. <laughs> All right. We're all replaced with black dragons. Witches. Fuck. Your blade. Oh man, cuts... I want a phylactery. <laughs> yeah. Your blade cuts through its back, and uh, yep. yeah, it's still standing, but yeah. it seems like that that did do normal normal strike to it. Cool that cool, cool beans. Um, it... yeah, that lich of phylactery. Liches <laughs> love phylacteries. I love phylacteries. <laughs> it turns and swings at you. Uh, with its clawed, grizzled hands, as meat has fallen off the tips, so its bones <laughs> poke out like claws to rip at you. Uh, 16? Uh, yeah, get fucked. Uh, also, he, I went to high school. I, I was in school for nine years. Zombies don't scare me. <laughs> so 16 doesn't hit? No, it doesn't, it doesn't okay. hit me. Okay, that's what I was looking for there. Yeah. Um... You hear clattering of bones as another skeleton rushes its way in. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. All right, it's going to strike at Emnos. Um, 18 Emnos. That will hit me on the nose. All right, you're going to take six points of damage um, as its claw comes in to strike at you and tears into your shoulder. Ow. That one is dead. Jules, you're up. Uh, Jules is uh, has this this entire time he's been fumbling uh, under his his robes and whatnot, and finally produces his holy symbol. symbol uh, and he steps forward, uh, you know, holding it out and set, says, "In your death, you will rest. You will labor no more." Uh, he's going to turn undead. All right. Let's take a look here. So I think first we're doing a turn check. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a charisma check. So it's a die 20 plus your charisma modifier. Yes. If you have five um, or more ranks in knowledge religion, you get a plus two. I'm going to double check that. Okay. Uh, I, I, I roll a five, but I only get two, sk two skills in it. So... Um, so yeah, that's gonna be just at my level, so four. Alright. You have a twelve. Yeah, so just at your level, so 
So it'd be 2d6 plus 4 plus 3. Roll them bones. 13 H uh, hit dice worth. All right. And that moves outward from you. Yes. Uh, right. 60 feet. And I will move um, throughout the turn uh, to my max uh, range. All right, so as, this... As they flee, or if they... This one is going to be scared. Let's just use that as a scare marker. This one will be scared. This one will be scared. Scared. Nice. And for anybody, anybody... Uh, Scared. Who has a, a high perception. Um, you'll notice that Jules' eyes are just glowing, uh, full of radiant energy. All Neat. Right. You will get pretty much everything that's in this room, and you also notice that the light seems to bind to the bones of the last skeleton at the end of the hall. Um, they will do what they have to do on their turns. Yay. And uh, that'll conclude my turn. All right. M no sure up. Okay. Um, let's screw up the skeleton. I'm going to give him a big old meaty murder kick with uh, Mountain Hammer. Okay. Meaty murder kick. New band name called it. <laughs> I like that. Oh. You know, I'm going to re-roll that. Because I don't like that roll. That's much better. A 23 will hit. Excellent. And this will ignore any damage reduction it has. Okay. You're kicking it? Yep. Okay. I'm doing 20 points of damage. 20 points of damage. All right. Uh, you knock off one of its arms, um, but it's still standing. But Impressive. that definitely fucking hurt it. Anything else? Nope, that's me. All right. Akko, you're up. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's finally wander around this corner and see that I can't get any further. Um. Guess I'll just cast shield since I'm standing here with nothing better to do. All right, I'm done. All right. Uh, let's see here. First up, this zombie will flee. Kip, you're up. Pew pew. Okay. Um, this zombie that's next to you would get an attack of opportunity. Do you want a five foot adjust? I'm uh, not sure I would have an angle if I did. You're right. If you did go over, you wouldn't have that angle. So, so I'll I'll suck it up for the shot. All right. He will swing. Do, 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 die roll. Do, do. 14? Miss. All right. See that Eldritch Blast. Fifteen will hit nine damage to the back skeleton. Got it. All right. Anything else you'd like to do? All right. This zombie will lumber into the room, and he will attack Emnos. Eight won't hit you, will it, Emnos? It will not. All right. This one will flee. Uh, Luna and Emnos will get attacks for opportunity. 
I'll take that. Give it a sword swing. That will hit. Alright, so damage. What kind of strike is that with Imnos? Is that a kick or is that a weapon? A sword strike. Okay. And then six from Luna. Damage reduction. All right. He will basically move through his guys. Wrong one. And flee off here to the north. And then this skeleton will run away. B, you're up. You might be muted, Dakota. Oh, sorry. What's going on with this skeleton right here? This one? Yeah. Um, it's been attacked by Emnos pretty substantially. Um, it does have uh, radiant coils binding around it um, that it seems okay. to be like looking at and jittering around as it looks like it's about to turn and run away. Okay. Um, I'm going to cast fire at it then. Okay. That will absolutely hit. 22. Six damage. All right. Six damage. Fire. Skeleton. All right. He is still up, but he is charred. Missing body parts. Doesn't look like he's long for the world. I'm I'm assuming Luna could see this one. Yeah, she can absolutely attack. All right. She have to move up a little bit to do That's it. That's fine. Thank you. <laughs> Luna, soon to be zombie slayer, has hit. Unfortunately, it doesn't take quite as well as it would normally. So it's just normal damage as undead yeah, can't be critical. Undead, yeah doesn't have all the same squishy parts that are vital like a normal person would. It doesn't mind if its kidney goes missing. Oh, I'm sorry. That sh should be D6 plus four. So it should be eight, eight points damage. of damage. All right. Yeah. And that's piercing. Reduce. It's natural. All right. It is still up. Dakota? Yeah. Roll a strength check. Oh, that's because uh, her trip. Oh, your trip attack. Mine. It falls to the ground. <laughs> she, she grabs its ankle and rips its foot right off its body, um, causing it to fall to the ground. Luna the zombie slayer. Can my dog or my, my wolf take levels of Paragon Wade? <laughs> Uh, unfortunately not, unless you, like, awaken her or something. Oh, well, that's I the know. plan. <laughs> Soon. Alora, you are up. You have a prone zombie in front of you. Alora? Yeah, sorry, I was muted. I'm not going to steal Luna's kill, but I'm trying to move my tab, and it's like the entire map is going crazy right now. That's where maybe refresh the page. Yeah, hold on. Sorry. I mean, for what it's worth, definitely kill that thing. These fuckers are tough. Now nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna move. Uh, there we go. Oh god. I'm gonna move up here. Bamf. You son of a bitch. What? It's my word. But, but can you bamf? Soon. Oh, well. You might be. You're muted, Wade. Are you attacking? Yeah, I'm attacking. See that strike of death. She left us! <laughs> 
Yeah, when she was there, now she's nowhere in sight. Yep. That will absolutely hit. Excellent, excellent. We go nine damage all right this one hasn't been hit yet all right anything else i believe that's all i can do right now all right so let's see who's up now um the zombie on the ground will attempt to crawl away from luna luna gets an attack for opportunity Tries to get away from Jules and his vile holy symbol. 17 will absolutely hit with a prone. Eight damage. Got it. And it crawls up into this corner um, and just claws at the walls as it's trying to get away. She doesn't get a her trip on attacks it's of opportunity. It stayed right? prone. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't get up. Um, skeleton will attempt to run Imnos. Um, if you have an attack of opportunity left. Uh, no, I already took it. Okay, it flees. Jules, you're up. Jules will uh, will step forward, uh, still brandishing his uh, his holy symbol, but he's gonna bring his quarter staff around. Okay. Not gonna work. No, that unfortunately will even miss a zombie uh, as it hits its its palpable flesh and it just sloughs off some skin as it strikes a, a grazing shot. Okay. And that's all I got. With that, there's a, a moment after your strike lands and the skin sloughs off and hits the, the ground with a wet splat that all of a sudden there's a ruckus of bones grinding against each other that just fills the hallways of this tomb. It fills all of your ears for a moment. Um, with this piercing scream of bone on bone. Um, I need everyone to give me a will save. Okay. I'm going to use Moment of Perfect Mind as a reaction. What will that Hold do? Hold on. It'll just make my roll higher, basically. Gotcha. Is this a uh, spell or a spell-like ability? It's a spell-like ability. Okay. That gives this, me a plus one. This isn't a fear save, right? It is not a fear save. All right. It's a will save, you said? Will save. Okay. Is it sleep or paralysis? Ah, shit. It is not. Okay. All right. So let's see here. If you roll... Got a reroll in your pocket, Katie? No, I do not. Oh, no. If you rolled less than a 14, you are going to take 12 points of psychic damage. Okay. If you passed, you take half of that. <laughs> and in the same turn, you watch as the radiant bindings on the undead shatter off of them. As Jules' turn has been broken. Well, that's scary. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, that did wasn't aware that was a thing that could happen. Broken, that's broken, that's broken. Got it. All right. 
Uh, Imnos, you are up. Imnos is going to step over here, kind of gain some footing off the wall to jump at this skeleton and try and slash him with a sword. Hit. All right. The blade slices cleanly through the zombie's flesh. 11 points of damage. 11 points. That's the first strike that one has taken as you you cut it good. Strike through the side. Akko, That's you're me. up. All right, we're going to go one, two, and three, four. And I am going to... Actually, no, we'll go here. I'll stab it with my spear. Okay. Uh... Weapons, okay. Nineteen will hit. Sweet. Nice. Spear plunges forward. Five damage. All right. You feel a little bit of resistance uh, in its flesh as you poke it and pull out. Um, it doesn't seem to have dug as deep as you want it to with that strike. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's see. Alara, the zombie will turn to face you and uh, reach out to try and bite you. Okay. Um. Seventeen. Uh, yes, it just meets it. Okay. You are going to take four points of damage, and I need a fortitude okay. save, please. Okay. One sec. You feel fine. Kip, you're up. Good uh, zippity zappity. Okay. You attacking the one that Imnos and Jules are on? Uh, no, the one in the corner. Okay. Uh, you Trying will take a. Up. It is prone, so you will take a negative four to the range of. Well, that. In that case, there's no different than firing into melee, so I'll just do that. Yeah. So that'll be a 22. That will absolutely hit. Seven damage. Takes it in the back, almost sends it tumbling, but it manages to stay on its feet. Um, as it lurches forward and then back up with a dull groan. All right, let's see who's up. All right, the one that's on Imnos and Jules. Um, he's actually going to turn and strike out at Jules, um, having brandished that vile, vile holy symbol at him. Uh, Jules. Oh, it's coming right back. <laughs> 12. <laughs> nope. Okay, he misses you. Um,. This one will slosh into the water towards Alara, but that's all he can do. Skeleton will run back around the corner, jittering with newfound vile energy, but he will only be able to get there with his double move. Fee, you're up. All right. I'm going to move up and then go towards the one that I have <laughs> been uh, dealing with. <laughs> the zombie that you and Luna are just bullying right now. Yes. <laughs> you're gonna if you're gonna bully a zombie, right? Kick it while it's down. Um. That's me. <laughs> uh, that will miss. Yes. Of course, that clacks off some of the broken stone here. That's Luna. That will hit. Mm -hmm. 
Seven. All right, she manages to tear another hunk out of him, but he's still crawling around. Do you need me to to roll another trip? To but it hasn't gotten up yet. It's still prone. So. Yeah. yeah. Alora, Wasn't sure if I needed to maintain. Yeah, Alora, you're up. Um, am I currently flanked? No. Okay. Well, You're I'm gonna hit the one. Shit. I'm gonna hit the one that I've been hitting. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo. 23. 23 will hit. Six damage. Your blade punches into its skull, um, dropping it very dead to the ground. <laughs> awesome. Redead. Oh god. <laughs> All right. The one in the corner will turn over on its back and start swiping at Luna. Uh 15? No. All right. Skeleton will run around the corner. Move over there. Jules, you're up. Um uh Jules is um, stunned that something can, could break such a thing. Uh, and he will uh, put push his holy symbol forward uh, and he will channel again. Got it. See that charisma check. Natural Hell yeah. Right. Oof. So, All right, so... Cleric self Third one with this charisma modifier. Fifteen. Fifteen. All right. So, um, let's see, Frayed in front of you. Frayed. Skeletons are afraid again. They just got back, but they're afraid again. This one will be afraid. All right. They are and, all uh... afraid. And while Jules in the past, like whenever his eyes have started glowing, you, you've all seen him kind of shy him away. Now the roots of his hair are straight, glowing with radiant energy. This doesn't look healthy. I don't know what the fuck you are, holy man, but you keep doing what you do. I think he's cool. mad. <laughs> oh Eric. no, they made they made party dad angry. <laughs> Very disappointed in all of you. You're <laughs> supposed to be dead. And this is gonna step over here and like before another broad slash of the sword for a wide cone ah didn't mean to do that Jules they didn't brush their gums yeah there to their uh, cone of fire got it yeah you'll be able to catch all four of them with that cone of fire I like it and they have get a DC 14 reflex save for half half of Two. That was that was garbage. Oh, <laughs> wow! I will, it's real I, wet down here. I, 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 since we haven't used them in a while, I will remind you that you do have fate dice that you can use uh, to augment damage if you'd like to. If uh, I, if no one would mind, I'd love to do that. You have a die twelve, a die ten, and a die eight available. Just roll the die twelve. Just do it. I'm Go afraid he's it. going to use all of these fucking dice at once against us. I'm doing it. You're doing the twelve. No. So that's a, Sorry, go ahead. Worth it. All so right. that's 11 total instead of 2. 11 and it says 14. No, 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 no I, rolled, I rolled a 9. No, DC 14. Yes, DC 14. Sorry. He won't use them all against us uh, because he made that his own house roll. <laughs> He'll just savor them for when he wants to really make us... All Both. I remember is him saying we couldn't use all of them at once, not saying that he couldn't use all of them at once. No, I can't. And I can't use them all at once either. If I'm going to impose it on you, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Thank you for specifying. Yeah. I go by Fey rules, where it's if it's not explicit. <laughs> uh, so you watch as uh, two of the zombies just immolate instantly, like tender boxes, um, and the skeleton in the back that's still missing its arm and part of its rib cage um, just 
burns and pop, pop, pop goes its cartilage that's still left as it falls into a heap. That was worth it. Akko, you are up. Uh, since we appear to be busy forming a line here, I'm going to step over here on the other side of Jules and uh, I don't know. I'll, uh, I'll, well, what is that? Your what? No, I was trying to think. There's not really anything I can. Oh, no, yes, I can. I'll stab that skeleton. It's not going to do much, but at least it's something. Okay. You can do it. We believe in you, Akko. I mean, I can, I could probably do it, but it's not going to do much because it's a skeleton. <laughs> what are you doing? Piercing My weapon best. sounds be great. <laughs> That'll hit. <laughs> That's something. Okay, nine. All right. You manage to actually pierce through its rib cage, and for a second you think you miss, and then you hit its vertebrae and its spine, uh, causing a little bit of a crack in the back. All That's right. how I do use my spear to break backs. That guy's I dead. Kip, you're up. We're not hearing you talk if you're talking, Johnny. You know, nope. Kippington. I assume you're going to be Eldritch Blasting the skeleton? Yes. All right, that will hit for nine damage. You hit it in the, the right shoulder, blowing the entire arm off its body. Um, its head jostles around like a bobblehead uh, before its hollow, sunken skull eyes stare forward towards you. Uh, dead... Alara, the last zombie is on you. He is going to try and bite you. Uh, 13 will miss, I'm sure. That will miss. All right. Too much armor. Uh, last skeleton will flee as he runs away. Kip, I, or not Kip, but uh, Akko, I believe you have. Uh, Attack of reach. opportunity. Nope. That will miss. He rushes away. All right, V, you're up. You're muted, Dakota. I'm just going to hang out in here. Because there isn't all that much I can do right now. Okay. Alara, you're up. You have the last zombie there on you. Nineteen to hit him. That will hit. None damage. And with another expert slash, you cut into its skull, severing off a corner. Um, of its brain as it collapses, redeadified. Okay. Are we out of combat? Um, it depends on what your next actions are going to be. If you're just going to continue pursuing the fleeing skeleton, or if you're going to take a breather. You have movement right now. What do you want to do? It's only going to run for a minute. Uh, I guess I'll pursue. Where did it, it... It went this way, right? Wade, you're muted. Yeah, she saw it turn that corner and go south. Okay. Well, that's about as far as I can go because I didn't know what was down there. Okay. So I couldn't just teleport. Dead. Um, Dead. All right, Jules, you're up. Um, I will uh, start moving in. Okay. 
And that'll conclude. All right. Um, as Jewel turns that corner, um, there is a moment that you all see that skeleton. And then around the corner, it almost like collapses on the skeleton, this wave of dark mist. Go ahead, Jules. Um, actually, can I preserve my action if I see additional undead coming to turn? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sorry, you don't I... see you don't see any undead with this. You do see this okay. mist pour out, collapsing like a tsunami wave on this skeleton, and then it rushes forward towards you and Alara, slamming into you both and sweeping oh. around the corner, <laughs> um, around and filling this entire tomb up with this mist. Um, I need everyone to give me a will save, and this is a fear effect. Okay, you get a, everyone gets a plus one to their fear attack, uh, fear saves. That's the bless gives that. Does Jules get anything for being close to you? No, this is just general. When I blessed everyone, you get the plus one to a damage and then plus one to fear saves. I think Jules gets an additional bonus from your aura of courage, though. I, I hope oh. it, I hope at a 21 it doesn't matter though. <laughs> uh so I, I have, that's a 14 that's a 14 for me. I didn't put my one. Yeah. 24 will pass. 14 Oh, will Katie, pass. Katie, you're immune. I am immune. Yeah. Too courageous. Ha. Too Fuck much it. courage. All right. Fee is good. Kip is good. Akko is good. Um, Imnos, you're all good. You all ha are made of some tough stuff for newly graduated adventurers um, as uh, you you bear through this, this mist that pours over you and you just feel this sagging depression for a moment like, I shouldn't be here. I'm not good enough for this. I, this is too much. And then that inner voice comes to you saying, no, I can do this. And the mist dissipates across the ground. We are not afraid of anything. <laughs> Endo, she were up. <laughs> Nick for yourself. Um, yeah move up that far and I guess I'll double move see the skeleton down there I'll move to here seems good that's me young Akko uh, I will follow. Two, three, four, five, six. And, uh, that'll be it for me. Okay. Uh, Kip, you're up. I'm good. Okay. Wait, no, I can double move since there's nothing to pew pew. Yeah. Hey, you still have your standard action to act how you want. Okay, you're going to blast a blast them. I'm going to try. Okay. I mean, you've been doing pretty good tonight. You've been hitting most every mark. I'll take it. I'll hit three damage. And that will actually blow its skull off of its its vertebrae, um, collapsing it into a bone pile. Is exactly how much damage you needed. Take it. Alright. Um, at this point, we will go out of combat. Um, as you see and, and hear no more immediate, immediate things in your general vicinity. 
Uh, I'm gonna start going through the room that I'm in and then the room to the north, just searching, looking for stuff. Okay, give me a perception check. Jules is going to uh, sit down on this uh, stone floor, just kind of fatigued. All right, 17. You you search around the nooks and crannies of these two rooms, Fee. Um, nothing really jumps out you as valuable. Um, the only thing that you do notice um, is a halfway broken um, sign of some sort above this sarcophagus that has been cracked open from the inside. Uh, can I try to like re reassemble the sign or make out some of the letters? Um, you would, you feel like you would need some religious knowledge. So if you have knowledge religion, you can roll that. See if you can. Hey, holy man. Together. Holy what? man, come back here. Oh. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll also go. Back here with Kip. Uh, back back, back to the, the second room. Yeah, back over here. Okay. I'll keep Kip company. And I'll just point to the Thank sign. You. Can Can you tell what that says? Where's the, what's the Let's not wander what? too far, Kip. Okay. So for those of you that are looking at the sarcophagi here, you, uh, above it on the wall, you can see this cracked um, sign of some sort. Uh, you, you recognize that it's probably a holy symbol, but... It's been cracked off, and there's stone on the ground in front of it. So give me a knowledge religion to see if you can't piece together what it might have been a holy symbol for. Nineteen. So with that, you are positive that it is not a holy symbol of any current deity that you are aware of in the lands. Um, it's definitely none of the paragons uh, reviled or revered. Um, it doesn't look elvish in nature. Um, you're not sure what it could be, but it, it looks old based on everything that's here currently. It's could, on the... Sorry. No, uh, can, could... Uh, and, and I realize this is kind of asking for a second role. Uh, could I take it from a historical perspective uh, using my, my uh, bard feet? Uh, you can knowledge. you can use your your closer cleric knowledge also yes I'm fine okay. with that. So, natural twenty. So oh, damn, Jules. As much as humanity has given birth to the paragons through revering people, through seeing people claw their way up or do acts of great heroicness or great evil um humanity's memory is also very short-lived you know that there is a cycle of paragons that have come in and out through the ages paragons that have been forgotten and replaced by others um you're sure that this is a paragon uh from before sometime probably within at least 200 years back that has just been forgotten by time and disused as people found other new things to think about and new actions to to worship. Um, you don't know who this paragon was. You've never been exposed to this, having lived in the Accords for your entire life, but you're positive this is a paragon sigil that has fallen out of use over time. I'll, I'll explain that to the party. Um... Do I have any inkling of a good paragon versus a, a less favorly? You would probably say, based on the way that this tomb has been set up so far as you've walked around, it's probably a revered paragon. The the, to the ancient tombs of reviled paragons aren't as nicely appointed as this is. I'll give, I... the, uh, I'll give the class of history. So I'm going to... It, I'm going to uh, uh, take a piece of paper and some charcoal out of my pack and make a rubbing of the symbol. Okay. What I was gonna suggest. Oh. Somebody draw it. If we if we go home, there are probably people in the capital who I know who m are old enough that they might be able to tell us what this is. Oh yeah, absolutely. I had the same thought. Um, I think this is the 
getting a rubbing of it would be a wise decision with this. Considering the fact that my instructor in the order, as well as, se as several other people, are probably old enough that they may have been alive while this was a, a worshipped entity. You have your rubbing. One wonders. Laura. Rubbing of um, just forgotten, forgotten paragon. paragon. Forgotten. Paragon. Jules takes a sketch as well. One wonders if the proprietor even knows this is down here. That's yeah. that's my one wondering. I'm wondering what this uh, tavern was before it was a tavern. Wade. Yep. They may have simply built the tavern over this. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, troglodytes chameleon skin and kind of shift the colors to match the walls a little bit and then stealth down this way. Okay. You can move yourself about all you want um, until I tell you to stop doing that. And that's going to be a nine, so... You are so stealthy, bro. I'm so stealthy. Your troglodyte form? Great choice. It's, it's fantastic at not being me. I'm going to continue searching in this room. Okay. Whenever. Yeah. I'm going to um, go down. Watch out, Kip. A troglodyte. <laughs> <laughs> uh, An Fee, immaculately dressed one. Fee, as you, uh, as you walk into this room, you do see the three sarcophagi that are set up here. Um, they are not cracked open at all. They appear to be intact. Okay. Is there um, anything written on the tops of them? Uh, there is. Uh, you can see that on these, there are some names uh, and some dates. Uh, confirming what Jules said, that it looks like these people were entombed about 200 to 300 years ago, is the time frames that you're looking at here. I'm just going to, for curiosity's sake, I'm just going to write down the names. Because if this was anyone important, we might want to... Uh, let people know to restore the tomb in, in future time. Okay. Um, the family name for these three sarcophagi are Whitaker. Okay. W-I-T-C-K-E-R. Okay. Uh, does, do things continue north? Is there okay. more up here? Yeah, you see Kip and, and Emnos up to the north. You see Alara okay. to the south. I guess I'm just gonna search down here. Okay. Are you um, for the the still intact sarcophagi? Are you doing anything to like look inside of them or or disturb oh, fuck them? Oh no, at all? I'm not a I'm not a tomb robber. Just making sure. I'm just writing. I'm just writing down the names. Okay. Yeah, you you'll be able to collect a list of names from here. Um, you can just if for your note purposes, just put names from the forgotten tomb. Okay. Are they all the same going down here? If I see any other names, are they all just the same name? Um, four of these six sarcophagi are cracked open. Um, okay. Only two of them are intact enough for you to get a name off of. Okay. Same last name? Uh, no, a different last name. Uh, this one okay. will be Bezel. B-E-Z-Z-E-L. Okay. And is there anything down at this end, like an urn or a statue? There's not an urn there, but what you see instead is a, uh, a little cup container that comes out of the wall. Um, you would assume that it's there to hold holy water, but it appears to be dry. Um... Jules, are you just a uh, walking bastion of light right now? Well, the, the hiding is not really doing me any good. I think you're the, muted. The, oh, there. Yeah, the, the glowing from the hair is gone. The eyes are no longer glowing, uh, but I do still have light cast. Or I, can, I have light cast in my hand. And, hey, Kip. Ah. Can you ask one of those holy folk if they can purify water, if they can bless water? Uh... Uh, I don't yeah. know if my voice can carry that far. Yeah. How how, how 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 like can I hear her from where I am? Uh, it's it's echoing in here. You can hear her. 
I just shout down the corridor. I have a flask of holy water. Will that work? Yeah, probably. I move up. Where, where is she? Uh, all the way north and then to the right. Okay, thank you. I just point to the bowl and it looks like it probably held holy water before and I'm wondering if maybe replenishing it might um, soothe the spirits that might remain. I mean, it can't hurt. I mean, it might hurt, but you know. Risk, reward, all that stuff. I pour uh, the holy water into <laughs> into uh, uh, the bowl. Okay. So as you pour the water into the bowl, um, black mist rises up out of the bowl as you all hear that clashing of bones again, echoing loud throughout the chamber. Um, gnashing, squealing, but this time it feels like something's in pain rather than causing pain. Um, I do need a will say from everybody, however, as the, the piercing noise in your ears vibrates across your skulls. Is this fear-based? It is not fear-based. Okay. No, Jules. Don't 11. <laughs> or 12, because I'm blessed. If you roll it, a... It doesn't ca- if it's not fear, it doesn't count for a bless. Mm. Um, also, just to double check something. Oh, no. Nat, oh, no. Poor nat kid. 20s don't norm... Nat 20s and nat 1s don't normally apply to saves. They do normally apply to they, saves. They do in 3.5. They, they, doesn't work on skill <laughs> checks, but it does work on saving throws and ability okay. checks. Um, so, um, if you roll a 13 or less, you are going to take 10 points of sonic damage. If you roll 14 or higher, you take half that. What was that damage again? Ow. 13 or less, you take 10. 14 or higher, you take 5. Oh, that was okay, painful. Thank you. Oh. oh. Sorry. You know that part where I said it can't hurt? I lied. I mean, it probably hurt whatever is whatever foul entity is down here too, so Yes, absolutely. In, in the lump sum we did a good, but doing a good hurt. Looking at the vessel looking doing at the vessel that hurts. was caked in dirt and grime and slightly cracked, now it's pristine marble. Unbroken unblemished i mean yes we definitely did a good good sign as you said sometimes doing a good hurts the other end of this hallway uh, seems to descend into an unworked cavern i think that's a bad idea did we do a fucky walky no we did it we did a good i think we've killed all the rats and maybe it's a good idea that we leave and go find a healer i you need a healer Let's say we have a healer. I would not object to it, no. I very badly need a healer. I'm not... Who all needs healing? I'm not. Shake my hand. Okay. Akko. I will uh, heal the chocolate. I can use a little healing. Take 12, or heal 12. Nice. Your friendly neighborhood lizard man needs a healing. Uh, 18 back, Joel. Oh my goodness. That's quite a handshake you have. Uh, okay. you, you see the gem on my fancy new belt flash and then turn dark. Uh, fee heal eight. I'm going to, I'm going to need a double boop. Heal six. Thank you. I'm not going to go far, but I'm going to look down this hallway to see how far it goes. If that's all right. You oh, can move well, your tokens I... as you want to move them until I tell you to stop moving them. Kip is going anyway. <laughs> and stop moving them. <laughs> Kip, you turn the corner, uh, moving into uh, this broken section of cavern. Um, looking to your right, you see a skeleton there jittering um, that snaps its head towards you as you as you walk out into open view. 
and we are actually going to call it there for the evening um as we are at our time for the night we will pick up next week uh seeing what else lies in this broken and forgotten place i yeah. have to renegotiate with this tavern owner <laughs> i hope that not rats. i hope that everyone viewing had a good time um make sure you tune in next week on tuesday for horde of the dragon queen we got our last session of that particular module um should be Exciting. very fun and of course next week thursday we'll pick back up with this game and and see what else is left for the adventurers to stumble into uh, tpk tpk <laughs> <laughs> damn it john thank you everyone i got my Have next a great character <laughs> i got my next character all